the Harley Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, <laughs> and we are here live today with my co-host, Ryan Ketchins. Are you sure about that? We are. We're going to have an extra heated debate today. I got three gentlemen here with me. We in here with Anton, Coach Crump, and Professor Odie, so let's get to it. Welcome Whoa. to Harley Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, my co-host, Ryan Ketchins. I can already tell, man. It's going to be a powerful one right here. You need to watch, too. I discovered like uh, <laughs> porn when I was a child. My mom. To get that white man's option out of his pursuit, me, I ran. I won, don't care. This is dope. You need to have a person. And you miss God now? It is time. We are here on this Wednesday night, Absolutely. and it's going down. I'm turned up, man. That energy that we got on Monday was so amazing. We just got to duplicate it today. It's got to be on point. Absolutely, man. We had incredible energy on the last show, man. We had Willie Moe and Laterris up in the studio. It was absolutely dope. And this, let me tell y'all, if y'all up in here today yeah. for this show, this show is going to be no less than the last show. And Hello. I want to let y'all know what inspired this joint here, by the way, because there's been a lot of talk about men in general and some of the issues we have. And you hear women saying that men just ain't who they used to be. They ain't as strong as they was, whatever the case might be. You even got, you know, on the other end of the spe spectrum, a lot of even men um, not satisfied with the current state of men, manhood and masculinity, whether we calling them simps, betas or whatever the case is. We obviously having some issues with the current state of manhood and masculinity. So the culture has inspired us to bring these three brothers here to the table so we can have a conversation addressing it all. And I'm very excited about what's going down here today. But before we go ahead and get into it, first, I want you guys to understand how this is going to roll and how this is going to move. I got three, uh, three uh, gentlemen here that all have very unique perspectives you know um i'm very excited about these brothers <laughs> me too man me too that we have uh coming up here very unique perspectives and um very well respected in this in their own spaces and we bringing them here hardly initiated to have a conversation today but before we get into the conversation, let's yeah. go ahead and show some love here, man, to the episode sponsor. Absolutely, man. Compliments to the chef, by the way. Harley in love dating cars. And y'all hear from me all the time telling y'all to get these cars. But I actually got an incredible love story where the guy really stepped up in his masculine on this one. Oh, well, 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 I want to hear this one. Lana, pull that photo up. Pull that photo up, up real quick. He real did, quick. he did. So, 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 guys, this is actually one of our lovely initiates, Danielle, okay? This is Danielle. She's beautiful. Now, Danielle. for the past few, shout out to Danielle. For the past few months, Danielle has actually been in a long-distance relationship with this guy, Brent, okay? okay. Now, <laughs> this thing, <laughs> they literally live in two different parts of the country right literally east coast west coast okay, okay. now i want to tell you how smooth this guy brent is okay so he knew that she loved the show yeah he knew that she loved the car so what he did was he actually had the cars ready ready to go when they linked up and, and this is the thing guys long story short yeah. the cars did their job they had an amazing time and the long distance turned into a straight vacation. Look at this photo right here. Ooh. We cannot make this up. Oh, wow. I we love cannot that. make this up. I love that. So this is what I'm saying, guys. Whether you want to get to know your partner better, whether you want to get to know your date better, or you want to spend some time connecting with friends over game night, the Harley and Love dating cards, they do, they do the trick. Hey. This is real. This is a real testimony. Brent is a true slayer. <laughs> all right. First Big off, shout know. out to Brent. You already know. He really stepped up. Yo, Brent. First off, Brent need to send us the photo. Send us the photos because I'm sure he turned up. No, that's that's dope, man. Hey, shout, shout out to Brent and Danielle. Big shout out and shout out to the brothers on here for this conversation. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce them now because um we got a brother here that already crashed the party once. He came in, kicked the door, guns blazing on the episode he wasn't even damn inviting to. Well, we had Yada on the show talking 50 50. Anton wasn't having it. All right, came in, told us his thoughts. And as y'all know, this brother here is not only just a YouTuber, but a men's advocate and has been making waves on the internet for quite some times with his perspectives. And we're, I'm, look, I'm excited to have you here join us for this conversation. Welcome to the conversation, my brother. I'm excited to be here. 
I for appreciate sure. you guys for bringing me on the platform. I love what you guys is doing. Absolutely, man. Listen, this set you got is immaculate. Yeah, that's you got to give us some, some set design tips or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the studio. This is my studio in Detroit, so. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, look, glad to have you. I want to get to my next brother here because my next brother here has been on the show probably, what is it, maybe about, about two times. I mean, this brother here is incredible. His rap sheet as far as working with men, being in the trenches with men, and he's been a men's coach now for uh, probably even over a decade. And um, in many ways, he's been coaching even men that's even closest to myself. Also a husband. I missed that with my man Anton. Anton is also a husband. This brother here is also a husband, which I think adds to the perspective and the uh, the the the, the, um, the layer that they're gonna the layers that they can get to in conversation. But big shout out. To my guy here, we got Coach Crump on the set here with us. Welcome, Coach Crump. Hey, what's up, fam? I appreciate you, man. Excited to be a part of this. Coach, welcome back. What is this like the fourth time? Is it, how, Coach Crump? How many I times? I think it's number five. I think it's number five, man. I'm, I'm no, full up. Five. I sold him five. Number five. five. Yeah. I sold him one short. Incredible. Wow, <laughs> that is incredible. I think he just rebroke the record because I think Tim was was at probably four so. or some five or something like that. Who knows, man? Yeah. Well, welcome back, Coach. Um, yeah. Glad to have Thanks you. Have a great brother. conversation, okay? Yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. And last but not least, we got a brother who has a powerful voice. This brother here is not only, um, you know, I mean, a brother here, but let me tell you, when I hear him talk, he just got one of those passionate deliveries that you can't help but stop and listen. And he, too, has been in the trenches in the street. He's a therapist working with our black men and women here for quite some time. And today he's going to give us his perspective on the state of masculinity. We got Professor Odie in the building. What's popping with you, Odie? Good people, great people, guys. People. What's going on? Thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Absolutely, man. Welcome to the show, man. How, how you feeling? I'm doing the best I can for the second man, brother. About yourself. Hey, I'm just ready to get into the conversation because I feel like the perspectives are are going to be uh, interesting to say the least. So I'm I'm, I'm ready. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, brothers. All of you brothers for being here today. We're gonna go through just two rounds today, fellas, because we don't need much. Because we're gonna go deep. We're not going wide today. We're going deep, because you know, as you know, based upon how our you know culture depicts it. And, and I would say, too, even speaking personally, I think there is an issue right now going on uh, with masculinity. And I want to get some clarity from all of you brothers here. And I want to start with um, what are we going to start on this one, fellas. Let's actually pop it off like this, because obviously hardly initiated. You know, we really try to put people on game to have healthy long term relationships in essence you can you know, pretty much wrap that into the mission of the platform because that's obviously a big part as culturally what we're struggling with, but also what many of us want. So I want to start here by asking the average man, do you feel like he is like literally equipped to be able to sustain a loving and long-term relationship with a woman? And Anton, let's start with you, brother. Absolutely not. Mm. absolutely not the average man no i don't even i don't even think that the above average man is equipped to sustain a long-term loving relationship with a woman and and i think that largely that begins with the idea of people don't even know first of all i don't believe in relationships either you're married or you're single wow there is no in between we're not in high school um i'm not gonna sit here and play games and mince words and and you know, speak to your feelings and, and how you feel and all of that. I don't believe in relationships. I believe either you're single or you're married. And I think that one of the problems um, within our culture is that we keep substantiating and justifying people's bad behavior and their feelings. To answer your question, though, specifically, I don't think that most people even understand what the meaning of marriage is. I don't think that me, most people understand how to vet for the woman that they need to be with long term. I think that most people are spending time, especially men, they spend a majority of their time vetting for a woman based off of where they are. And then when you hear women speak about don't date based off of potential, that's all you have to go by, right? Because most people that should be married 
should be married younger. By the time that you get older, it's very difficult for you to be able to vet, uh, vet effectively because most people have trauma that they're dealing with from previous partners and previous people that they that they spent their time with, right? Mm. Previous, previous people that they slept with. So it's very difficult for people to really know what it means to be in a loving marriage. I'm not going to say relationship marriage long term because you're not even the same person that you are when you first get married right when you say long term i say forever i say forever i don't believe that you know you should break up the family and so when we say forever you a different person at 20 than you are at 30. you a different person at 40 than you are at 30. you a different person at 50 than you are at 30. right so to sustain it it, it takes a lot more than just love right Marriage is also a business. It's it's an emotional connection. It's a lot more than just love. And it's Antoine, I want to I want to interrupt you interrupt you real quick because I want to get a, a general idea. Do you think that marriage for for men marriage should be the ultimate goal? No, it, okay. absolutely not. Your your goal as a man is to live in your purpose, and and any man that places a woman before his purpose is absolutely one hundred percent out of his I, I, they out of their mind. To be honest with you. You should never, ever place a woman before your purpose under no circumstances. And your purpose is never a woman, ever. Okay. <clears throat> so going back now, moving forward with, um, I, I actually want to get your perspective, Odie, on this one. What's your thoughts on that? Did, and did you need me to repeat the question? Yes, sir, please. Got it. So is the average man equipped to sustain a long-term relationship with a woman? Mm, I don't believe so. I definitely don't believe so. I believe that a number of men lack the emotional intelligence and emotional regulation skills to sustain a long-term relationship or a long-term marriage. As Anton said, they don't have clarity of purpose. They don't have clarity of self. They don't understand how it is to navigate through, partic through particular, I guess you could say emotional landscapes. They don't understand how it is to communicate. They don't understand how it is to appropriately engage in particular types of vulnerability. They don't recognize how to respect themselves, neither the people around them. So I, I don't, I don't, I do not believe that the average man, once again, is prepared for a long-term relationship. Got you. Coach Crump, where you at on that one? Yeah, man, I, I will honestly say no man is prepared for uh, equipped to sustain a long-term relationship with a woman. And when I'm saying that, you may have skills and experiences like Shout out um, to Antoine about talking about the things that we need and also being black and white about single and married. I love that and I, and I agree. But I think the understanding is like no man is really equipped. I mean, I thought I had swag. I thought I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. I did what my mama said. I did what the church said. I did what my daddy said. And when I got married, man, that was a whole nother world. So I had to read books. I had to get mentors. And I would consider myself and socially from, from a contextual perspective, I wasn't an average man, but I was not equipped but I had the desire, I had the commitment, I had the willingness. And on top of, even if I had the skills, even if I did already read those books, even if I already had a mentor and I was older, my wife is evolving. She's developing, her needs is changing. So I would still have to get more equipped to handle the woman who I had when she was 22 compared to my wife now who's 43. I had to learn a whole nother set of skills because the dynamics is different. Her, her energy is different. Our goals is different. The kids are teenagers. It's just so many things. I'm still at 41, still learning different aspects. Okay, now I got to make a pivot here. Now I got to make a pivot there. But if you're not in the trenches working that out, I'm grateful to be doing it for 20 plus years with her. But I've learned so much even coming in as a above average man. So I don't think no man has equipped with all the skills to sustain a long-term marriage with a woman. But if you're committed, you can learn it over time. Okay, so so pretty much everybody on the panel, you know, agrees that men are not really equipped equipped to, to sustain a long term relationship. Exactly. So now, I mean, we got to get into some of the solutions, try to figure this thing out. I mean, uh, Odie, let let me ask you this because you you're saying you know everybody's agreeing that the men are not prepared. Where's the first place, the first place a men or, or the first thing a man should take into consideration if he's looking to put himself in a position for a long term relationship? Honestly, I would say how it is that he perceives women and how it is that he engages with women. So there are a number of men who treat women as objects and places of transaction instead of individuals and entities where you can learn and engage with and engage from. 
that's the first place. I also feel like another place is your own trauma as a man and what it is and how it is that you've come to learn what relationships and what love look like, right? Do you understand love as a place where you just give, 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 and you don't receive anything in return? Are you unjustified in what it is that you ask for? Do you recognize what it means to be a person who knows what he wants and how it is to ask for it? What his boundaries are when somebody crosses your boundaries? How do you communicate that? It's something that is necessary for men to recognize from the place of one, once again, how have you learned and what have you learned about women, but also two, how have you learned and what have you learned about yourself, not only just in spaces of healing, but in spaces of trauma. Okay, so w w with that in, with that in mind, cause, and I want to open this up to the to the floor. This is you know Chris and Anton included. Uh, with men, you know, may not be in, in the understanding of how to engage with women. So, Anton, Coach Crump, Odie, w would you guys think that it would make sense? It's in the man's best interest to self-identify himself as a leader and take that same mindset into his relationship. Should a man assume that, hey, in the healthiest relationship, I should be in charge, so to speak. I should lead the, the relationship. Yeah, absolutely. But see here, you're skipping a step. The, the, the first step is being able to identify what a wife is because you can't put, you can't conflate the two. One of the things that's wrong with society today is that they put in, and I hate to be frank about this, they put in a hoe and a housewife in the same sentence. I mean, you know, we got a lot of people and the pool is really, really muddy. There's a lot of piss in the pool. And we got women that saying that you should be a step crash. Dump. I'm sorry, a stepfather, right? I don't believe in that. I don't believe in taking care of another man's kids. I would never advocate for a man that doesn't have kids that's at the top of his game to go and be a stepfather and then put himself in a position to, to have somebody else call him daddy when the person that she should have married is the person that she opened up her legs to. And so we skipping steps. We talking about the man a lot of times, but in reality, we keep forgetting that women got options too. And then they say that they want a partner. They don't say that they want a husband. You see what I'm saying? So you got to recondition a person that you're going to deal with. And you got to make sure that y'all equally yoked before you even start talking about leadership, because by default, men are leaders. They are leaders. And so we like to conflate that. And we like to say that a man is not a leader or what does he have to do in order to put himself in a position to lead? But we skipping steps. See, yeah. Well, wait, go ahead, coach. There you go. Yeah, you go. yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm going I'm going to go to a different a different perspective too on skipping steps. I'm gonna take a different angle though. I don't see how you do any of this without God, man. I ain't gonna hold you. Like a man has to first be in one accord with the higher calling on his life, and he has to be committed to that because your relationship with your wife is a representation with your relationship with God. So if you're not even committed to God and you're not even understanding the qualities and the attributes that you're going to need as a man to serve the God, you're not going to be able to take care of his daughter because that, that commitment. I tell people all the time that we talk about capability, we talk about equipment, we talk about what she wants and what he wants. Are you even do you have a, a committed spirit in what you do? Because if you like if you always analyzing and looking for a way to get on and get off and do you or get yours then it's always going to be a reason for that. It's always going to be an option for that. But if you like, man, for God, I live and for God, I die. It's, it's easier for you to process to take that on with your wife. You know what I mean? Uh, so I, for me, let's say that first. Yeah. So, so let me see. I agree with that. But then at the same time, um, you know, that is a part of your purpose. You see what I'm saying? In the very beginning of this conversation, and I said that a man needs to make sure that he's on his purpose. And that's not just related to money. That's not just related to your career. That's not just related to your kids. I agree with him because in my opinion, the way that you show you love God is to show that you love the people that he put in front of you. So, Come you on. know, that's the additional context to it. But then in addition to that, my purpose and my calling comes from God. I can take you. I like to call myself what you what you would call a benevolent dictator. Right. Meaning that I'm very passionate and I want to see who you are. And my job is to unleash you and put you in the best position possible. But at the same time, I answer to God. I don't answer to people. I don't answer to you. I don't answer to the children. It's a hierarchy. And so I think that part of being a leader is understanding your purpose and living in that masculinity, understanding what the hierarchy is 
instead of aligning yourself based off of whatever it is that we remix and what a relationship is today. So, See, uh, I want to take a different. I want to take a different approach to that. I'm a, uh, Odie, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you go ahead and take this one, and then we are gonna move into the next the uh, the the, the follow up topic. But go ahead. I got you. So this whole idea of once again submitting to God or being within your purpose, all of those things, or you're talking about self leadership. You're talking about leading the self, right? So I disagree with the whole idea that a man is naturally a leader if he does not know how to lead himself. There is no natural state of leadership if you are unwilling or incapable of engaging with this purpose or engaging with this self-direction. So how can you engage with your community or how can you engage with your wife or how can you engage with your children if you as an individual are not submitting to your purpose, submitting to God, you're wayward. So this idea that we have to externalize what a man needs, like, no, 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 no. If you are not able to see within yourself and have the self-reflection and integrity to lead yourself, then nobody else will be willing to follow you. So I don't agree with this whole idea of, oh, there's a hierarchy. Like, no, 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 no. The reality of the situation is if you are one within yourself and you have the ability to self-reflect and then you have the ability to lead from that angle, you don't have to be anything other than yourself. People will follow you. No, that's not true. Absolutely not. Because leaders are groomed. And so you can be ordained to be a leader and then at the same time, understand or continue to be groomed with the skill set of what it takes in order to be great in certain environments. No man knows how to be a father until he's a father. But at the same time, there's a blueprint. That's why it's called the word. And the word gives you the blueprint. I don't have to do a whole lot of self-reflection. I can operate based off of the blueprint. And then as I continue to grow, the revelations of what the word is is revealed to me based off of wherever it is that I am in my life. So I don't have to sit here and go through a whole lot of self-reflection in order to understand what a leader is. You are born a leader as a man. Now you need to step into your purpose. That's the reason why you got fathers. That's the reason why you got a community. That's the reason why you're supposed to be involved in the church. And then a lot of times men need to suffer, right? You don't just, no man becomes who he truly is without really suffering, right? And that comes without a woman. That's before a woman even comes into your face. That's before you ever have children. Right. And I'm not talking about self-inflicted wounds. I'm talking about failing in a controlled environment to understand what greatness looks like. Right. I'm talking about being able to endure long enough when your family is dependent on you, when everything is fumbling. Right. Because it's not just about getting rich. It's not just about having money. It's not just about therapy and self-reflection. A lot of times even therapy itself can be a scam because a lot of people depend on therapy in order to keep them on that on that IV. They're not looking to solve for and then and then solution for where it is that they're supposed to be, which is why you need to be seeking your purpose. And then she gets up under you from a submission perspective because she then becomes the beneficiary of your greatness. I don't have to negotiate with my greatness in order to understand that I'm a leader. A leader is born. And most men, most men are born to be leaders. That's why God built us the way that we are. And so by the time that you then get the grooming and the understanding and the suffering and the lessons that ultimately make you who you're supposed to be to lead your family. That is the blueprint. And that's laid out in the word of God itself. Mm. May I rebut? Go ahead. Go ahead. So you said two things. You said grooming and you said understanding. Grooming is you being taught. Understanding is you having to reflect on what it is that you have been taught in order to internalize it for yourself. So what you just said was somebody has to be groomed and they have to understand. They have to go through a particular level of suffering. If you are being groomed, that means you were not born this way. You were molded. You were taught. Somebody engaged with you in a particular way so that you could come up into this space. If men were born leaders, that means that they would not have to be groomed. They would, have to, they would not have to go through any suffering. They would just come out that way. So, no, I disagree. And, and, you, and you're wrong. Wait, wait. I, I, I want to be clear. I want to make sure. Wrong. Wait, hold tight, Anton, because I want to make sure. So, Odie... So a relationship with a man and woman, mm -hmm. I just want to be very clear. Are you saying that the man is not an automatic situation? The man is not the leader or should not be even looking to be the leader in a relationship? I'm just trying to get some clarity. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the man is not automatically a leader simply because he's a man. That's foolish. Now, let, let me ask you this, Odie. Would you say that the ideal relationship, the ideal relationship structure is the man at the head of the relationship? If that man is a man who understands how it is to communicate and talk to the people in his family, absolutely. But most men don't operate that way. That's crazy. Wait, so so <laughs> this is insane. So so, so do so, you the way do you think it's possible that 
a woman in that relationship, man and woman, that the woman could actually oper uh, successfully operate the leadership role and the relationship is able to sustain over time. Can you define leadership role? <laughs> okay, so in well, this why case- why did you have to define leadership when he already spoke no, to it? No, no, what no, do no, you no. define yeah, as yeah. a leader? So, I'm asking it? you to clarify because he asked the question. No, 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 because this is the thing. Oh, you, you clearly just said the man can't want, should not necessarily operate in that role, you know, it, it, because he, he has to be qualified in these certain ways. So mm -hmm. assuming whatever you understood about the man being in that role, mm -hmm. can a woman sit in that same role we were just speaking on mm -hmm. and it be a successful relationship with the man not necessarily in that, that, that leadership position? No. Statistically, no. Ideally, but statistically, no. The reason being is because nine times out of ten, because that woman perceives that man in a particular way, she won't she won't engage with him long term because she doesn't respect him. Okay, so you pretty much do acknowledge that a man typically does have to head the relationship in order for it to be successful. I believe that a man has to have a particular level of identification and communication with the people around him in order to lead that relationship effectively. Yes. Okay. Are you listening to what you're saying? I'm definitely listening to what it is that I'm Co saying. Coach, Coach Crump, what, what, do you have anything to, to kind of say about this? So, I mean, as a matter of fact, let me just ask you the question. Do you think, Coach Crump, do you think that to sustain a long-term, successful, healthy, happy relationship, the man should occupy the leadership role? I don't think. I know. So I want to be clear. Um, I don't want to blur the lines. And, I, and I, when, I, when I hear Professor, I just think he's, he's using – based on scenarios and situations, right? Um, but in the absolute world, every man who's connected to his purpose, I want to kind of connect the entire conversation. If I'm if I'm walking in my purpose with God, I'm not I'm not questioning what I do with my wife when I that's my wife. Like he said, she had qualities of a wife. I approach her, I ask her for a hand in marriage. I made all the visionary moves to live in this country, live in that country. I told my wife just to trust me. Like I, I can't imagine it being the other way. She approaching me to, hey, do, we, do you want to court with me? Hey, would you marry me? Hey, and I'm like, I, I, I fundamentally can't even process that in that regard. And I mentor, and I'm saying that in the context of somebody that's going to mentor a thousand men. And I know that a lot of men we talked about earlier are just not equipped with some of those skill sets that I've been able to uh, acquire with my dedication in my life to God and my work on myself. I think we're just talking about in situations and scenarios of brothers not being in a healthy space or a traumatic space or a neglected space or an abused state. Like now they're now that makes these different dynamics. But in the absolute reality is is black and white with me, man. Got it. And, and it sounds like to, to some degree when I'm listening to Odie's perspective, I can imagine that just in, in general, gender roles and how we traditionally understand them you might feel that gender roles might be outdated. I don't want to assume that, but let me know. Do you feel like traditional gender roles, is that something that we need to redefine or we need to really stand on the traditional gender roles that we know, Odie? I firmly believe that it's something that needs to be recontextualized, right? Because Anton made a statement where he said that I'm a benevolent dictator, right? And a benevolent, I don't believe that benevolent and dictator can go hand in hand. Like there's no... My bad, y'all. There's no See how God way. dealing with you right there? See that? <laughs> <laughs> See how God dealing with you? He know how to oh, you know once, again, once again, once again, <laughs> this thing as a benevolent dictator, right? So when we talk about this idea of leadership, when we talk about this idea of engaging and leading, there has to be a particular level of understanding who it is that you are as a man. That's one. But also, two, do you understand what it means to communicate? Do you understand what it means to come to your wife and say, yo, this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. And this is the way that it is that we're going to go. A benevolent dictator, like that means that I'm being nice to you, but I'm still telling you what it is that we need to do. That's I'm exactly still, what I'm doing. I'm still forcing you to do what it is that no, I, I didn't say. I forced you. I but said that's that that's exactly what I'm doing. That's what a dictator does. Oh, listen, listen. I got one rule. I will never force you to be somewhere where you don't want to be. I'm never going to try to convince you to do the thing that's in your own best interest. You know what your best interest is. You know that we are much better together than we are apart. I'm not going to try to convince you. But at the same time, when I took your hand in marriage, you understood that I was going to be the head of this household. Listen, if this house is foreclosed on, nobody is coming to you 
and saying, hey, baby girl, why is your house foreclosed on? That's my responsibility. I own that. I would never put on her the requirements of what a man is supposed to take accountability for and ownership for. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, there are certain decisions. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to take into consideration what you say. It don't mean that I don't care for you. That's my benevolence. That's the fact that I actually value you. It means that I'm also looking to try to understand you to put you in the best position possible, not only to benefit from this situation emotionally, financially, spiritually, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when there's a decision to be made, it stops at me. 100 percent. There's only one head of household, not two. This is not a co-CEO situation. None of that. There's a husband and a wife. And I don't even want to put on her the responsibility of the decision making that I have to make. I don't even want her to go through some of the things that I have to go through in order to ensure that this family is taken care of and that it's in its best position possible. She has a role and a responsibility. She lives in that space. I create that space for her to thrive. She loves it. And so my dictatorship means that this is not a democracy. We don't get votes. We don't do none of that. Now, we do communicate effectively, but she also understands. Listen, if you ask her, she'll tell you, I don't even want to know what's going on on that on that front with this thing that you got to deal with. That is the responsibility of a man. Mm -hmm. And so absolutely 100 percent, I operate within a benevolent dictatorship. Right. And I cannot speak to can I? Okay, go ahead. Let's go, coach. Go, go, ahead, go, coach. Ahead, go ahead, coach. Go ahead, coach. Now, now I, I, I was just saying, like, I think why is important too. Um, <laughs> for um, Mr. Daniels, I, I just, the brother, I, I resonate a lot because I always, I say questions like this, right, Professor? Like, we was in a situation, with my wife and kids, and something happened. I don't care what the scenario is, but it was threatening to my family. So he mentioned the foreclosure, but some a burglar trying to come in the house too. Got a gun. He got to shoot somebody. The, the house is on fire. Somebody got to get sacrificed in the house for everybody else to live. Right. Uh, we're, we're in an accident and somebody has to be sacrificed for everybody else to live. The only person that thinks about absolutely sacrificing themselves on behalf of the family in every single scenario for every single person, no matter what, is me. Like I, I, I walk in process in the vein of. I am willing to die and kill for everybody in this household on a regular basis and twice on Sunday. So for me, that's that 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 narrative that I'm processing and walking around in my wife, because she has me. She's not walking like, like thinking about that. You know what I mean? Like, let me make sure I make sure I take a bullet for my husband and make sure I jump in front of the building. Like she, she, she's in a safe space. So she's doing what she needs to do as a woman, as a wife. Why? Because I'm in her life and I'm processing at all times, at all costs, I got everybody no matter what. That's what that leadership don't come with. No, I'm bossing you around. That leadership comes with I'm willing to make the ultimate sacrifice every single day for every single one. And nobody else has to worry about that because they're in my household. That's right. what that really looks like. You know what I mean? I understand let, me, let, me be, let me be very clear. My wife hasn't worked in almost 17 years. For nobody other than me in our household. Ever since my daughter was born, that was the last day that she ever stepped foot in something that I'm supposed to be responsible for. So when I say benevolent dictatorship, again, you got to remember that there's roles. We really operate within gender roles within my household. And I would never put her in a position based off of what the standards are that we set within our relationship, right? Based off of those standards, because I do take her feedback into consideration, I would never put her in a position to have to go and fight for resources with another man in order to ensure that we survive and that we thrive. Right. And, I don't, and, and, and let me be clear. I don't think that there's any woman that would ever want to have to go out there and be forced to work. Right. So anybody that would disagree with that is wild to me because that, that just tells me that we are redefining what a relationship is and gender roles are. I'm gonna actually drop Odie, that poll. Let you, Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm, like I'm, I'm gonna let Professor Odie respond before, and then we're gonna move on to the next thing. But go ahead. Most definitely. But the thing that both of you all describe is not a dictatorship. Neither one of you have described a dictatorship. Anton, you've described more benevolence, and you've described more in tune communication with your partner than you've described dictatorship, because dictatorship implies that you're doing this by force. Force, right, brother Crump? What you're talking about is still communication and what you're talking about is still a particular level of engagement with the people around you in communication with them to say, this is what it is that I'm going to do. But to say that your wife or to say that somebody in your in your household is not 
thinking about how it is that I'm going to sacrifice for this family in this way. I don't agree with that. I firmly believe that in a lot of different ways, the women in the household, they think about how it is that they're going to sacrifice for their family. They think about what it is that they're going to do outside of what it is that's necessary for them or beyond what it is that they feel like they need to do in order to make sure that their children are and their husband is where it is that they need to be. So once again, that's the reason why I said benevolent dictatorship. I don't necessarily agree with that terminology because dictatorship implies that you are forcing them to do this. Both of you have just identified that you have conversed, you have agreed, and you have engaged. That's what I mean just when I say, gender roles, hold on, let me finish. Okay, I'm sorry. That's what I mean when I say gender roles need to be redescribed because the way that it is that we identify it is that because I'm the man, what it is that I say goes and I'm forcing you to do what it is that I say. So well, well now, me? now, Odie, real, real quick, now, because yeah. I and, and I think Anton might have been getting ready to bring this up, but it is it it sometimes in relationships it does become a fork in the road. So you can take those steps like Anton talk about in communication and try to find some level of agreement, but sometimes two people cannot come to an agreement, and the decision still must be made. So in in that situation where a decision must be made, okay, and the family must go into this specific direction, who is the final decision maker? In that scenario, Anton, me, the man, ultimately, and see, just because we communicate effectively does not mean that this is not the direction that we're going in. You understand that this is where we're going. We're going here. We going in that direction. Now, I may be able to sauce it up a little bit cleaner for you and and, and make you feel good about it. Oh man, you know, we we definitely gonna make sure that we get this up and we doing this. And I need you in order to make sure that you know you you help me get to this space by being a phenomenal mother to your to our daughter. And we we can sauce it up any way you want to. You can communicate. You can say anything to anybody if you say it the right way. But the point mm -hmm. of the, the fact of the matter is we going in this direction. And if you don't want to go in this direction, then you can't be married to me, flat out. And that's the way that it is. That's the way it's going to be. That's the way that my three brothers that's married at early ages since they was 21, 22 years old, just like me. They operate like that. Never been divorced. All nine of my uncles on my mother's side, never been divorced. We don't know what illegitimate kids or divorce look like. My father been like, that's the way that we operate within our, our society. And we don't have the same problems that the society that y'all live in and the culture that y'all subject yourself to is enduring through. We don't have that same situation. And if we had more people that operated within these gender roles, submitted themselves to the way that God has already aligned it or, or, or outlined it for us to operate by, you wouldn't have some of these issues that we have within society. So many people want to fight against the truth because they don't like the way that I say it. I just say it wrong and cut. You can twist it, mm -hmm. you can make it what you want to be, but the man is supposed to be the head of the household. He's supposed to control what direction that y'all going in. And if you don't like that, then you shouldn't, you shouldn't have got married to him in the first place. That's what vetting is for. That's why you yeah. should order in your life. Guys, you gotta say, listen. I, 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 I gotta say this. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, Kron, go ahead. Now, I gotta say this, because I think what's important to like, even professor like the clap back of what you don't, you know, you believe a wife is, um, we know that we know women have those thoughts of protection. Like I'm not dismissing that. And I, and I don't want us to lose track of, but if I'm in the house, of my, if it's my house, if it's my wife, like that's not their responsibility. That's not the weight. That's not the burden. That's not the everyday concern. But if you don't have it, of course, obviously just being a woman in this world, you have to think about your safety and your well-being of those that you love. But that's the point of having a husband. So a lot of that, you don't have to burden yourself with that emotional taxing of, OK, I got to protect them. I got to provide for them. I got to figure it out all the time. You want to remove a lot of that stimuli so they can be who God has called them to be. So I just want to put that context that me saying that doesn't mean that my wife doesn't do that or doesn't have those thoughts. Of, of course, she does. Of course, all women do. But the difference is she's not forced to day to day bear it and figure it out and deal with it and manage it so yeah i just want to add that let's go to the poll ryan actually just dropped the poll for yeah. us let's let's see what they're talking about again. i just dropped the poll but i want to read some a couple of these super chats real quick real quick shout out to chris monroe st louis shout out to my guy tashawn and ryan bag chases in the building so anton about to drop them bombs shout out to all the new initiates and shout out to bb bb i'm just highlighting it because you said the cars are significant bb i 1000 percent agree with you but ladies and gentlemen i dropped this poll because the guys were bringing some heat but i thought i wanted to see what the audience think and it's a resounding what was the question oh close to 450 votes who should lead the relationship 95 percent of the people say the man 
I get that. Now, 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 before I move on, obviously, you know, it's a lot of ladies in the chat too, you know, and they saying that the man should lead the relationship. Odie, do you have an issue with a woman who has a, a, a traditionalist mindset that believes in traditional gender roles? Do you think that there's also an issue with her uh, level of conditioning and wanting those traditional gender roles um, and, and, you know, her thinking in that way? No, I don't believe that there's anything wrong with it, right? Because here's the thing. When we talk about traditional gender roles, a lot of times when we're having this conversation, when we actually start having this conversation, it begins to become more egalitarian, right? It begins to become more about sharing particular things. It becomes more about talking about what it is that's going to happen before it happens. It talks more about how it is that we're going to move through this as a team, irrespective of who it is that's making the decision. Right now, if the man is going to lead the relationship, just like Anton said, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to talk to you about it. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to engage with you about it, but it simply means that we're going to go in this direction. My issue becomes my particular issue becomes that force. I'm going to tell you what to do, when to do it, and you don't have any feedback in this conversation. That's where we begin to get into what it is that we identify as traditional. Because it comes down to the whole idea of I'm going to make you do something without considering how it is that you want me that you that this could go. And a number of women genuinely, they do not want to be forced. They want to be engaged with. They want to be considered and they want to be talked to as it relates to the goings on of the relationship that they're in. Basically, what he's saying is he agree with me. He just wants us to finesse it better. Like when we break but, it down but, from a C student's perspective, uh, you, you can throw all of the big words and all of that on top of it. You agree with me, you just throwing some word salad on top of it and saying that we need to make it sound better for them in order to convince them to go willingly. That's what you're saying. So so check this out, because I want to actually take it in a different direction because we, we talked about gender roles here. But again, this conversation was about, you know, the issues and the state really is more so in masculinity in general. Gender roles, obviously, is a conversation that's regularly brought up. But there's some different things that we see in here. And I want to make this conversation a bit more culturally relevant as well. Because me personally, I'm very disturbed by just some of the things that I see on my phone when I see this constant feminization of men. I, can, I, I notice this. I see, you know, men doing things that we would traditionally consider as feminine characteristics painting nails, you know, wearing clothes that just might start blurring the lines on what manhood and womanhood is. Certain amounts and levels of costume jewelry too. 100%. First of all, haircuts. When we start seeing men take on these more feminine characteristics, is this a crisis in masculinity? And I know I cut you off. I want to bring this back to you, Odie. Would you consider that a crisis in masculinity? Nah. <laughs> nah. I can't okay. I can't rock with that. The reason why I say I can't rock with that is for a couple of reasons. One, if you got all these things on you, if you're wearing all these different things, X, Y, and Z and A, B, and C, I don't believe that that has anything to do with your ability to engage in the behaviors that we identify as masculine. So once again, leading the home, engaging in what is necessary in order for you to hold down the home being able to engage with your wife and your children in such a way where you're moving them in the direction that they need to be moved in, right? What The clothes that you wear, the haircut that you got, the jewelry that you got on, the, come on, bro. Let's be real about that. Let's be real. And and this is and this is where and this is where we start blurring the lines. <laughs> hold on, this, you this, got this Crump is, and hold Anton hold scratching their head about this. But, but, no, but see, this is, you know, professors are brilliant powerful black man and this but this is where lines get blurred even when he said the challenges of traditional roles is the force like projecting it as a narrative of what a traditional role is a traditional man don't force his way of a, tr a, a traditional masculine mature man of god shows up and people act me yes i don't have to, i don't force anything in my life as i because i walk in who i am and people recognize that they, they, they draw into the light and the same respect of if i'm walking in that i can't be walking in that and painting my nails and, 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 and painting my lipstick. I'm sending a different message. If people are not taught, it's caught. So whatever I say is going through one lens, but they're they're catching my visuals. They're catching my example. They're catching 
my demeanor, my tone, my temperament, my energy, my spirit, the space I occupy. That's what's being translated. So I can't be saying that I'm walking in mature masculinity and I'm walking in that in my day to day living with my wife and children and my community. But yet I'm expressing myself in a way that's confusing. That's 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 saying, well, which side of the fence it is. It's like saying, you know, I'm really not a, a stripper or but I'm but I'm wearing a two piece in the street. I'm saying, why are you acting like I'm a stripper? I, I'm really not a police officer. I just got the uniform on because I'm expressing myself. So like that's when you start saying, well, well, well you got a police uniform on when you got a you got a bikini on outside. You're not. A, now I got to try to interpret things. And, and that is that's why we're here where we're here, because we're leaving so many things up for interpretation and kids and young people who are who their brain is not fully developed. Their emotions are not fully mature. This is where all of this stuff starts to go left, starts to go right, starts to go all over the place. And so that that's important that we kind of make the lines clear. So I, 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 I want to be clear. It's black and white with me. So let, I, let, I, I, no. I'm going to piggyback off of that. Chris Cross, stand on it. I 100% yeah. agree with him. And the thing about it is that communication is 90% body language. It's 90% of what you do is what you put on, right? You You can't. My wife is a reflection of me, right? Which means that I have an expectation of her to present herself a certain way when she's outside. Now, I can't have that expectation of her if I don't first have that expectation of myself. It's confusing. It's confusing to our children. We blur in the lines between what femininity and masculinity is today. Uh, also, on top of that, we don't do that in any other circumstance except for our culture when it comes to relationships you don't go on your job and you just do what you want to do and expect for people to respect you in the same way you don't you move based off of whatever the uniform is for such job that you are you are a part of and so how can we sit here and be disingenuous and say well it doesn't matter or that's not as important especially when we have confused children and one of the very fights that we're having in society today is how our children are being taught when we're not with them and they're in, in school for eight hours a day. The first thing that you learn, and this is why it says put them in, put them in when, they're, when they're young and it'll never depart from them. The first impression that they have is who it is that their parents are. And so when you see something happening within your marriage or, or you know, I like to say that I'm the man that I would want my daughter to marry. And if I had a son, I'm the man that I would want my son to be like. And I would never want my son to walk around with, with nail polish. I would never want my son to walk around um, being immature at 40 and acting like he's 20. I would never want my son or my daughter, or I never would want my daughter to marry a dude that's walking around being feminine and he's a reflection of her instead of her being a reflection and trying to make sure that she's meeting the expectation for how he set the standard in his household. It absolutely matters. And that's one of the things that's going to affect whether or not you're able to sustain that relationship long term. <clears throat> Listen, first of all, I feel you on that one. It's interesting because, you know, one of uh, I was talking to a close friend of mine and he actually said uh, he's a father of three. I grew up with him, ran into him after seeing him. I uh, haven't seen him in years. And we sat down and we caught up over dinner and um, he has two sons. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. He has one son, his oldest. And one of his uh, biggest fears is his son just becoming homosexual mainly because of and just out of his influence right but just because of what he sees on social media what he's around and just the level of exposure is so high that's a real fear to him and i, I want to you know just really get depth and understanding to how open you are because again this goes back to how many of us see masculinity and the spectrum of it odie do you think it's important to clearly express to your child, especially a young man growing up, that he is only to be attracted to women as something that's a clear black and white signal and um, and an action or value for him to have as a young man? I disagree with that completely. Completely. The reason why I disagree with it is because it causes a number of health, health outcomes that are not beneficial for that child at all. At all. See, here's the thing. People believe that you can teach somebody how to be gay. People believe that you can teach somebody how to be homosexual. That's been proven time and time again that you cannot. 
You cannot teach somebody how to be gay. Brother, if I say to you, oh, it's cool to go fuck dudes, and then you just going to go fuck a dude, that means that you always wanted to fuck that dude. Right, it ain't no way that you can sit up and tell me it ain't, bro. You, there's no way that you can teach somebody how to be gay. If that were the, if that were the case, if that you were a the therapist, case, bro, of course we can, bro. We can run down the data. Well, sometimes there, you, know, you know, there's no way that you can teach somebody well, how to be gay. It's proven, it's been proven time and time again. That's that's one, but also two. That's the reason why conversion camps don't work. That's the reason why when people send their kids to these camps to teach them how to be straight. Where they get this electroconvulsion therapy, where they get beat, where they get abused. That's the reason why these kids are jumping off of buildings. That's the reason why these kids are killing themselves. It's not because they're confused. It's because somebody's attempting to teach them what it is that they know that they're not. You can't teach somebody how to be straight. You can't teach somebody how to be gay. So wait a minute. You're telling me, are you telling me that you are not directly influenced by the environment that you are raised in, the culture that you subject yourself to? Are you, let me, let me put it to you this way. Mm-hmm. Is it a fair assessment to say that a lot of people that wind up saying that they're gay, right, mm-hmm. that they have trauma or something that happened to them when they were younger that also impacted how they see sex and how they see people and how it is that they relate to the opposite sex? That would not be a fair assessment. That would not be a fair assessment. There's no correlation to that. Right. There's no direct correlation oh, to the idea that something oh, happens. Oh, let, me, let, me, let me restate myself. Let me restate myself. There is no statistically significant correlation between somebody being abused, somebody being molested, and them turning out gay. If that were the case, there would be a lot more gay men. A lot more. There are because, a lot of gay men. Oh, oh, oh. there's a lot, a lot of gay men. I said a lot more. Because what happens in these, what happens in these homes, what happens in these churches, what happens in these rooms is that both boys and girls get molested. Both boys and girls get sexually assaulted. So if that's the case, why are there not more gay women? Let, let me ask you, let me ask you this, guys. This is crazy. Guys, I want to ask you this. Is it is it and and we can we can start with, with you, Anton, and, and then move to, to Crump and Odie. But is it fair if a woman says, Hey, you know what? If a man has ever had sexual relationships with a man, I would never date that man. He can never be an option. Is that fair for a woman to 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 say that? Absolutely. 100%. I believe that everybody has the right to have preferences. Now, whether or not you can get whatever it is that you prefer is a completely different conversation. But 100%, it is it is within a woman's rights and it is absolutely fair for a woman to say that if a guy has ever done something sexually with a man, that I don't want to be a part of that situation. And I and I support it. If a woman said that, I would 100% back her up, be in her corner, then there's nothing that you can say to me that would ever get me to change my mind as far as supporting what she says and what her preferences are. 100%. And I don't think that she should. Because I believe that if a man is engaging sexually with another man, then he's gay. 100%. You can remix it. You can say bye. You can throw a bunch of letters on it. L B G T A B C D E F G. You can throw whatever it is that you want on it. But if you let another man in any way, shape or form and you volunteer to touch a man's Johnson or he touched yours or you rubbed up against another dude's butt, you are 100 percent, in my personal opinion, you are gay. And it's OK for a woman to say, I ain't messing with him. Real talk. That's where I stand on it. Odie, Odie, go ahead. So what I'm hearing is that one, Anton, just a quick question. So mm-hmm. if your daughter were to come to you and say that she was a lesbian, how would you respond? What do you mean? She would never do that. She would never do that. Wow. She would never do that. I set the standard. Um, we put it in them when they're young. And she absolutely would never, ever come to me and say that. Nope, um, so I, I, don't play Anton, hypo- so- I, don't, I don't play hypotheticals. Let, at all. And, and as a matter of fact, let me help you to understand something. Um, if let's just let's just entertain it for the sake of conversation. Um, I'm, I, I didn't do my job as a parent, um, either that or I did do my job as a parent and I need to let her go. I will never go against whatever it is that the word of God says. Mm. Absolutely not. I will never, ever. I will disown you in five seconds. One hundred percent. As long as you are under my roof, you're going to do what it is that I say. Now, when you decide to leave out there and go on your own, then that's a completely different conversation. But I will never support anything demonic 
inside of my household, especially when it comes to doing the things that I think is absolutely going against the word of God. Yeah, again, I think we're going, and I think we'll hijack it. Like it's going back to having something before the, the, the first thing is done. Like we're skipping steps again. Like I think about, let's go back to what you were talking about with the masculinity of our boys and how the world is influenced and the things of that nature. My son has a rites of passage this summer, right? He turns 15, he goes to a rites of passage, but he got, he got some preliminary steps. And we talk about the four male archetypes, right? The king, the warrior, the magician, the lover, and the mature masculine way that that's carried out. So me and um, and my family were going on a weekend trip with men and like cut the emotional building cord for his mom. He's going to step into his manhood. My son has been preparing for this his whole life. My daughter did hers for her 15th birthday, right? She did her rites of passion called the Intungent Experience. When we integrate her South African culture, her Bermuda culture, American culture. And so my son will be doing a similar thing on Bermuda this summer. Because that is how he grew up, right? He is ready to be a mature masculine man. He wants to, that, that, he doesn't know anything else, including like God said, the word of God. Like, I, it really determines like how you groom children. Like, you can groom children. And I've been on my post. I've been on my post strong their entire life to make sure they was walking and feeling in their position because me choosing to be a masculine man to their mother, that's not that's not me. What a flex. What a flex. I'm jealous. I'm like, I see that little flex. Like, like, You're not slick, <laughs> Anton. What do you do? Y'all, y'all, y'all never seen him. Come here. Come here. Say hi to the people real quick. <laughs> This is social proof. Oh wow! Hey, hey excuse hey. me, excuse me, wife. Are you happy? Are you happy, or are you sad with <laughs> that dictatorship over there? I am extremely happy. Oh, okay, oh, satisfied hey. wife. Hey. That is one satisfied wife that just dropped her testimony. We love that. Okay, hey, check this out. I want to have some fun here, and I don't want to cut you off here, but this is what I want to do. I want to get the family involved because I think this is a really important conversation. We're talking about sexuality right now. And what I want to know is, is it important? I want my initiates to come up here and talk to us. Should, will you be teaching your children sexuality in the household? Should you be teaching black and white sexuality in the household? Ryan, let's go ahead and drop the link for the initiation hotline. Hotline, please. Absolutely. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. We're going to put that link in there. You'll go backstage. We'll bring you up one, one at a time because I really do want to get some context on this because. I, and, but, 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 Todd, that's what, I, that's what I was getting at. So what I was getting at is with my son, I asked my children, do you think I married your mother because I love her? And they was like, yeah. And I was like, no, I married her out of choice. I married a black woman out of choice. I married because that's the right thing to do for us to build a family that we're trying to have together. I thought about procreation. I thought about longevity. I thought about the next hundred years. And she was a woman who was prepared to be a wife to play the long game, not just somebody who wants to be a dope female, but somebody who wants to be a wife and wanted to serve and support collectively what we got to do. So taking taking this like, but does she does she not, you know, does all the sexual things I like, like taking the lust out. Because once you start adding these other things, now you're, you're adding in people's lust preferences. And that goes into another world. But when you make it a conscious choice that I got feelings, that I got all of this, but what's best for us in this family is for us to make this choice to move forward for our legacy as a family. And so I just wanted to put that there, that I do have that conversation with my children. Understood. Incredible. And guys, I actually dropped a poll, too. Can a man still be masculine and wear nail polish or have feminine mannerisms? Ninety mm. percent. We got close to six hundred votes right here. Ninety percent of people say absolutely not. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, should I agree? But here's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, the, the, the nail polish. Yeah. So listen, it's just yeah, I want y'all to come backstage here because again, I want to have the conversation. I want to bring you guys up on sexuality, whether or not you should be teaching your kids the correct sexuality making it very black and white in your household because if i'm not mistaken and while this is being uh wh while they coming in here and everybody's coming backstage i also want to just kind of get an idea from from yourself odie because i want also people to have an understanding of what the other side looks like because i think most of us grew up in a household like that if you don't teach your child that this is what they should and should not do as far as a boy you only like girls like this is what it is you you're gonna marry a girl you're gonna have, like if you don't make it that plain what what is the other option 
when you say what is the other option, what do you mean? How like, do, do how you just else? not talk about it at all? Do I just oh, avoid that yeah. conversation as a parent or do I have a different kind of conversation with them? So you have a different kind of conversation with them, right? In my mind, the conversation is inclusive, right? So it's not all of this. That's demonic. That's this. That, that's just how other people live their lives. If your conversation is based upon how it is that you want your child to engage, that's completely and totally fine. But the line, the boundary becomes making other people's lifestyle choices or making other people the way that it is that they engage, whether it be demonic, whether it be all of this other stuff, that's that's unnecessary, completely and totally unnecessary. That does not have to be a part of the conversation, right? If somebody comes to you and says, yo, this is what I saw, this is what I learned, that's how they live their lives. That's what they do. Now, that's not necessarily what it is that we believe in this house, but what it is that they do is how it is that they do it. That does not make them any lesser people. That does not make them any more of a, how you say, a demonic person. Like, nah, I don't believe that. Jay. But why, why, why would you, Odie, why would you present those other options to your kids, though? Why would you present them? If that's not how you operate, why would you present these other options? Whoa, whoa, whoa. So you're asking me personally. If my child comes to me and says, Dad, I think I might be feeling X, Y, and Z and A, B, and C. I'm going to walk him or her through this conversation about what it is that they're feeling. Why are you feeling this way? How did you come to this realization? Are you sure that it's not something that you saw externally or is it something that you feel internally? How did you come to this conclusion? Right. I'm not I'm not I'm not in the space of making my child believe that what it is that they feel internally is, quote unquote, incorrect, especially as it comes down to the way that it is that they feel as if though they're attracted to somebody or how it is that they're navigating through their attraction. Because once again, if my job as a parent and if my job as a father is to make sure that my child grows in such a way where it's most beneficial for them at the time that they at the time that they engage, then I'm not going to tell my child something along the lines of what it is that you're feeling is demonic. Because we are once again, we already have statistics around that. We already have health outcomes around that. It increases anxiety. It increases depression. It increases suicidal ideation. It increases homelessness. It increases aggression. It already increases all of these things. So why would I contribute to that? But see, see, it's, right, it's, check it's, it out. Check it out. Check it out. Yeah. We're going to bring that initiates up because I want to get the people's feedback on this one here. I'm straight up asking the question. Should sexuality be taught at home? I'm bringing Joyelle up on the stage. Joyelle, I hope you're ready to speak. Uh, Lano, help me out. Let's go. go yeah, we got to bring some, show, bring some ladies in. We got to bring some. We can need some feminine energy here. Joyelle's on the stage. Lano, I want you to bring Joyelle up so we can see. We got to ask her a test question first. What up, Joyelle? How you doing? Joyelle, living? what's popping? I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you guys? Go ahead. Good. I'm blessed. Go ahead. Give me your age, your location. We added this one in last show and your relationship status. And pop quiz. Who who should lead the relationship? Man, I'm going to ask you a question. No, because we're going to hang up on if there's anything okay. else. Okay. <laughs> but go ahead. But go ahead. Give, give me that. I'm 49. I'm, yes. I'm calling from Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm currently single. Got it. Okay. The let, man should let, lead the relationship. Okay. Cashville. What about this sexuality? Should, should, will you be teaching sexuality at home? Um, my son is 24, and I definitely taught sexuality at home. That doesn't mean teaching him how to be sexual, but that meant me teaching him, okay, you have a penis, women have vaginas, you know, women carry babies, you know, and... um. He needed to know these things emphatically before I sent him off to daycare. And when I say he, sexuality, just to be clear, uh -huh. that whether or not he should be heterosexual, did you make it very clear that he is only to be heter heterosexual in your household? I don't think I made it very clear, um, but his dad was in the house. So I think it was just naturally what he saw. He saw me in a feminine role as his mother. He saw his dad in a masculine role as his father. So I think that kids imitate and mimic what they see naturally so i don't think it necessarily has to be taught it's just about what they see what they're exposed to that i think really influences um which direction they may go in i never supply him with barbie dolls and i'll tell you that so i did try to influence like with toys but he naturally gravitated towards trucks and more masculine toys i never dressed him in pink like who does that so i believe that parents can definitely influence by what they're doing to their children and how they are um carrying on just on a day-to-day -day basis but no I didn't, uh, I'm blank. I didn't tell him oh you are need to be heterosexual or you know you need to be this way but I showed him through example his dad that, showed him through example 
Thank you very much. We're going, we're going to get to some other initiatives. Thank you so much for coming on here, okay? Yep, and initiatives. Make sure you have your, uh, your turn your camera on because that's what, how I'm going to know you're serious about being in the studio. We only got limited spots, spots, spots in the studio, guys. So please turn your cameras on. We'll bring you up. Please be brief and brilliant because I want to bring a few initiates on. I like All right, we're asking here, are you to teach your kid's sexuality at home? I got Street Media TV. Welcome to the show, brother. What's popping with you? You on mute, brother. You on mute. You on mute. We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. Yeah, my bad. My bad. What's yeah. up with you, brother? Go ahead. Give us your yeah. age, your location, and your status. Well, I've been married 20 years. Location, Philadelphia. I'm 48. Um, all of that stuff should be should be taught at home, you know, uh, by the parents. Uh, I mean, it, it goes without question, but the parents have to be aligned right, and they have to be living right in order to actually teach the children the right way. So I just think that I... Listening to this conversation, I agree. I agree with Anton, but the problem that people like me and Anton run into is we're, we're considered dinosaurs today, being traditional. We're dinosaurs. I'm, I'll be a dinosaur. I'm cool with that because yeah, I, no, I, I teach yeah. that all day long. And the most yeah. important thing for me, though, is that I don't just teach sexuality. I teach morality. I teach the mm -hmm. ethics. I teach the Bible. We go to school together we 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 learn homework i'm at parent teacher conferences i participate i made sure that her mother didn't have to go to work in order for her to be able to not go to daycare or be a latchkey kid to where she didn't get morals and values based off of what somebody else is teaching them i teach that you can't have sex before marriage you know i teach that you have to respect everybody the women in our family and the, and the, and the daughters are raised to serve every man at the dinner table including for holidays um, and then the men are taught us, uh, you know, a certain thing and that we got to go ahead and take care of business before the even women even get there to ensure that the place is suitable enough for them to be able to do what they do. So we are I'm cool with being a dinosaur. I don't want to be of the world. I don't want to be of the world. I want I believe that the majority of these people are going to bust hell wide open. Mm -hmm. And so I'm cool <laughs> with standing on the idea that I'm going to move as a dinosaur and I'm going to let y'all go ahead and have the rest of each other and y'all can figure it out together. Well, Hold on, Anton, cool. let me let Street Media TV finish so we can get to the next initiative. Street Media, yeah. t uh, close out really quickly for me, brother. Oh, shit. All right. Well, I'll, I'll just say this. Um, a lot of people come and say that they want traditional and they want this until it's actually time to do the work. You know, uh, relationships is not, is not something that's promised to you like life or death. It's something you got to fight for. Everything that Anton said, people say that they want that. But when you got to actually do the day-to-day -day work of being a parent, being a husband or a wife, and doing that, people don't want to do that work because it takes work. It's what Anton is saying, doing the actual work of what he's saying takes a whole lot. And I just landed here. Um, the homosexual uh, wildly uh, topic with the child. I use, I'm, I'm old, super old school. But uh, so you, you teaching it, you teaching it at the house. I'm teaching it at the house. But I, but I will say this. I will say this. I, I, like that, I will say that some children are, are born that way. You can see it. I can see it. You, you literally can. See, I've seen it in my nephew. So, and you can't, when I'll say now I'm done here. I've learned in my years that some children, you can't ungay them. They who they are. It's, it's okay. nothing you can do about it. You, you can't pray it out. Of oh, wow. Well, okay. Okay. Look, appreciate it. Street Media TV. Thank you so much for coming up, brother. Appreciate you, brother. Welcome back. And this is going to be the last one I want to hear real quick before we go to the next one here. I got, it looked like we got Kendra up in here. We bringing a lady up on this joint. Kendra, what's popping with you? Want to hear from the sisters? Um, I had my camera off. I'm a little under the weather, but y'all gonna make me put my face on here. It's okay. <laughs> it's all good. That's Feel all better, good. Kendra. Look, um, listen. Age, location, and a relationship status, and and let us know your answer to the question. Um, I am 45. I am single. Um, I've been married before, though. However, I do believe that um, things should be taught in the home. Um, from growing up, I feel like nothing should be taboo, but it has been taboo. When we were growing up, and that's why some of our children are what they are today. They have been raised without parents uh, or single in a single family home. And even if you do have a single family home, both parents or one or the other needs to teach the child in regards to how the Bible has it lined up, because that's why we're here for God's purpose. This is one of the reasons why I love your platform, because you guys are bringing love back to the atmosphere and everything starts with love. We got to teach our kids. They only know what they're being taught, um, which is also why I'm walking in my purpose in regards to creating a mentor program, because it has to start with the youth. And sometimes we are not being taught in the home and the program is being created to teach everything from A to Z in regards to how we're supposed to live on this earth, the things that we should and should not be doing and how to walk 
in, in God's path, period. It's just nothing other than that. I will say that sometimes our children do get away from what's being taught in the household. And because of that, things can be put in a mask where they can question things, but I'm not going to be okay with saying that's okay if it's not in regards to what the Bible says. Kendra, thank you so much for coming up and wow. giving your perspective. I, like Blaine. I appreciate now, we that. Now, still, we still got some initiatives in the, in the box yeah. right now. Y'all in the queue right now. We're going to code y'all in there for, for a little bit. So hang tight, and we're going to get back yeah. to the conversation. What you saying, Coach Trump? Yeah, I, I, again, it's always like we're skipping a step. It's always like we're skipping a step. And I can't, and I'm hearing a resounding theme. And it's like, what makes this transition easy, seamless, natural, organic, is the man and woman being on the same page and being in the home and exemplifying what they're looking for. It's, it's, it gets way more complicated when you got baby mamas, baby daddies. You got, they're going back and forth to different houses. So the reason all of these other scenarios and concoctions we got to come up with is because a man and woman is not honoring their vow to be together for life and work things out and come in with a healthy reference towards each other and a respect towards God and committed to that. Because those things are not happening, now we got split homes. Now we got parents giving different views and different perspectives and different energy and bidding wars and trying to win kids. When all of that stuff happens, now you leave a child, again, left for interpretation to my feelings, to my thoughts, to my opinions. And that's what I go ahead. So my biggest flex is not that I got stuff. My biggest flex is me and my wife have stayed together after 22 years. My biggest flex is that my kids was raised on the same leadership their entire life. That is the hardest thing to do in this world. All that other stuff, anybody can do. But we are not conscious going in as a woman, as a man, are we doing this for life? Because our children are right behind us. It ain't even about us. As soon as you get married, it's not even about you no more. And I think we're, 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 we're talking about what the children need to interpret when they don't need to interpret anything if they're living under an example. So, yeah, I want I want to just make sure that pretext was important because when you don't have that, and that's why we have such a big discussion. So because me, everybody me ask, got these different type of households. Let me ask this coach, because I think this is very important because the, the conversation of marriage is, 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 um, you know, being consistently brought up and ideally, you know, that's probably the, you know, home structure that the children are being brought up in in the first place. You made a statement that I think is very important to address. And I want to get the thoughts of the brothers here on the set, because you said that you don't do not believe a man. And I want to make sure I'm quoting this right. You could tell me yes or no. You said you do not believe a man can become his highest and best self without marriage. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. Okay. Not his highest and best self. Anton, mm -hmm. what's your thoughts on that? I don't I don't believe that to be true. That's probably the first thing that I disagree with um, with coach tonight. I, I don't I don't agree with that. I don't think that marriage is the purpose. I think that marriage can be beneficial. But I believe that there is plenty of men and women uh, who have thrived. The thing that I don't subscribe to is that you doing the thing that you're not supposed to be doing and acting like you married um, when you really not. But I believe that there are a lot of single people and people that live within their purpose and is doing some phenomenal things and an impact in society in, in a great way um, that may not necessarily be tied to marriage. I don't think that every woman uh, necessarily is required to have children, even though that's a, a traditional thing, right? I believe that there's a lot of people that become great within their own right. And as a matter of fact, one of the things that I advocate for is for people to be working on themselves. I say that you gotta be selfish before you be selfless because you can't pour out of an empty cup. And a lot of times people then tend to try to get married thinking that attaching themselves to somebody and you know them becoming interdependent on somebody else for their happiness is going to make them whole. When in reality, that's one of the reasons why a lot of people end up in divorce. So I think that doing the work within yourself and then attracting yourself to the person that you're supposed to be with based off of networking effectively, which then puts you in a network of people that you're equally yoked with, will then help you to find the person that you're supposed to be able to grow with. And then you can pull 10 times your weight as a result of it. But having a connection and relationships is not just based off of marriage. You can have great relationships and impact people and organizations and do great community service and help people and do great things. And that's not necessarily tied just to marriage. Marriage in a lot of instances is so that you can benefit each other, so that you can benefit the kids 
But there's a lot of people that are single and a lot of people that are doing it the right way and they're not operating out of the same cultural norms that is bad for us as a community. And they're absolutely thriving. So I don't think that that applies to everybody. I don't think that that blatant statement can be applied to people that are single or married. I think that you can be a married person and a horrible person. I think that you can be a single person and be a phenomenal person. And I think it just depends on the circumstances and what your purpose is, you know, according to what God has defined what you're supposed to be doing within his lifetime. So let me just get some context on that, just so we can even understand where that thought came from. Give me some coach. Why is it? Do you believe that a man can only be his highest and best self through marriage? Yeah. So I, I thank you for putting that question. Highest and best self you be phenomenal. And like, and like uh, coach, um, um, brother Daniel said, like you could be horrible person in marriage too. Don't get it twisted, but your highest and best self is because marriage is, is a sacrament to God. It's not, it, that relationship, all other relationships, it's like mutualism, roles and responsibilities, transactions, you know, checks and balances. Whereas a marriage is a covenant where you're the one relationship in humanity that represents God relationship with humanity. And so it, it pulls something out of you that no other relationship does, because there's a there's a calling and a conviction that's higher than yourself that you have to operate in. That if you wasn't in that commitment, you wouldn't do it. I, I know part of me having more patience and understanding and sensitivity and empathy is not because I took a course. It's because I stayed to my commitment and I had to grow that skill set and those soft skills in order to maintain and sustain my marriage. But if I was just doing me and shooting hoops and kicking it with the fellas and getting to work, I could work double time, triple shift. I give back to my local church community, bless the kids, do some workshops, speak, coach, mentor. Man, work is easy for most men. Like that's what we were born to do. Marriage is something you have to stop. Pause, think, pray, submit, read, research. Like it, it, it takes on a whole nother dimension of you to get to your. And, and, and if you don't do that, you won't get to the higher version of yourself. And there's no relationship that would challenge you the way that a marriage would. I, but see, how, how can you say that and be a man of God when the greatest people that ever walked this earth biblically never got married? Paul, for example. One of my favorite people inside of the Bible um, and wrote a lot of the books of the Bible and I absolutely wrote some of the most beautiful letters to the Galatians, especially explaining what the seed of Abraham was and how it was that we were supposed to divest ourselves and then grow into the New Testament based off of the Mosaic law. Never got married. Jesus himself never got married. His bride was the church. And so I believe that if you really understand the Old Testament and how it goes into the New Testament, and then you also take into consideration what marriage is, but then at the same time, abide by the main, the main principles by which he said that we're supposed to live our lives, loving ourselves and loving our neighbors as ourselves. You can do that with anybody. And you're supposed to be continuously growing, whether you're in a marriage or not. I don't need a marriage personally. And I love marriage and I'm an advocate for being successfully married. And it's a difference. I'm not advocating for marriage itself. I'm, I'm advocating for doing it the right way. So if you're not in a position to really be able to lead within your, your marriage, then you shouldn't do it. And you got more work to do. Right. And that comes from within. But at the same time, I don't think that you have to be forced to be married in order for you to really find your best self. That's supposed to be a, a, a thing that you're on a continuous journey to do until you die. Regardless, if you marry, if you married or not, you're supposed to be. I show that I love God by telling the truth and doing the thing that's right by people every day because I can't see God, but I can certainly treat the people on this earth and his children. And by doing the right thing, because my goal is to leave this earth in a better space. Had I not been here, I'm going to do that whether I'm married or not. I'm going to do that whether I have children or not. And I don't need a marriage to force me to be the best version of myself. I'm going to continuously be on that journey. And I think that it would be discounting so many people that has done phenomenal things, including some of the people that I named in the Bible itself. All of the disciples, all of the disciples laid their lives down on the line and their bride is the church. And they're a reflection of how we supposed to be living. Our, we, we, we live our lives from a blueprint perspective based off of the very people that never got married in the Bible. So how can we make that argument? But then at the same time, say that you can't become the best version of yourself unless you get married. Mm. I, I, I truly believe this is my personal opinion. I truly believe we talk about Jesus. Let's go, let's go to Paul and Saul and, and I mean, Paul and, and Jesus 
So yeah, he changed his name. That, yeah, yeah, that that context is like I, I'm not comparing nobody to Jesus. I I, I put Jesus, uh, the disciples, but the everyday person, everyday people living in this world, the men I work with, the people I live with, the world I'm operating in. I don't see anything that we have practically that pushes somebody day to day, particularly men operate in their best version of themselves. I haven't seen anything. I'm not going to compare them to Jesus. I'm not going to compare anybody to Paul. I wouldn't even do that to anybody. What I'm saying is just my brother, my friend, my cousin, my uncle, my, my granddad. I haven't seen anything push any man like Isn't that as what far we, as oh, him. Isn't that the blueprint? If we're not following Jesus, then who are, who, yeah. are we, who are we to compare ourselves to to evaluate whether or not we meet the expectations? I'm not saying I'm not saying not to follow the examples of Christ. I'm saying when it comes to practically, what do I have separate from me doing my work, me following Christ? Because, again, people could be phenomenal, do incredible work. I'm not dismissing somebody doing phenomenal work in the community. I just fundamentally don't believe personally that you can be the absolute best version of yourself and not have as a man and not be married. That's just my personal opinion. And I'm curious to know here, just, just so I can get an understanding, because by the way, we got people backstage. I want to get their thoughts on this really quickly. So we're going we gonna to run through. Listen, initiates, be brief and brilliant when I bring you up here. But I want to know your thoughts on this one. But Anton, quick question before I bring him on. Where you are today, do you feel like you would have been as polished you are, all your skill sets, your highest and best version that you have reached to at this very second without your marriage? Yes. Wow. I, I was going to be great with or without marriage. Now, that does not mean that she is not phenomenal, that she is not an awesome person, that she is not a, a great mother, that she does not add significant value to my life. But I never went into, I never looked for a wife. I never looked for a wife. I met her in high school. I didn't talk to her in high school. I did not take her virginity, even though she asked me to in high school, right? Because at that time she wasn't in the church, I was, right? So I identified her and I just told her, hey, listen, you can't be touched. You're not gonna give yourself to nobody and you're gonna save yourself a marriage. And you know what? You're probably my wife, but we gonna have to, you know what I'm saying? Continue to do whatever it is that we do. And so we was just best friends. We never talked, we never did any of that. We never had sex. We never did nothing. She was the good girl. And so I wanted to protect her and make sure that she was taken care of. And then when we wind up, um, when we wind up growing up and then we graduated school and then we went off a year or whatever for college and she contacted my mother, she got in contact with my mother and, she, and you know, we had, she called the landline cause you know, it was a different time. You know, it was back in like 2000, 2001. And then my mother, she had never, you know, really took to any woman or any girl that, that called the house or anything like that. And she was really adamant about Rita. And she was like, yo, you need to call this girl. And so then that's when we started to evaluate what this was. Um, but I told her from the very, I was on my grind. I was working. I was grinding. I was going to church. I was taking care of business. I was working 16 hours a day, sometimes seven days a week. I was working at the steel mill at Rouge Steel. And then, you know, when she, when we just reconnected, then it just naturally took off and I invited her to church and we went from there and then, you know, the rest is history. But I wasn't looking for a wife. I was focused on becoming great. And so I always believed that I was going to be phenomenal with or without with with or without somebody. Um, but she absolutely added a, a lot of value in my life um, from a wife's perspective. But I was going to be great regardless. That's what that's what God ordained me to do. That was the prophecy. Uh, that, was my, that was the prophecy that was spoken over my life. There you have it. So what we're going to do now, we're going to bring some initiates in. It's time for the hotline. I want to get your thoughts. Does a man have to be married to become his highest and best self? I got beans on the stage. Unmute your mic, brother. I want to hear your thoughts on this one. What's up with you, brother? You're still muted. I can't hear you, beans. Hold on. Let me see if I can help you out. I can. I think you got to unmute that. There you go. Got you, yeah. What's, What's up, on? beans? What's good, man? Beans, just, Beans hey, what up? G give me your age, your location, and your relationship status. Uh, 46. I'm in Kentucky, and I'm recently single. Recently single okay. from a relationship or from a marriage? Uh, I would call it a marriage, but it was a relationship for 14 years. What wow. The, what the hell? Beans, would you, why, what, why, what? why the hell would you call it a marriage if it was a relationship? <laughs> what happened, Beans? Why, why y'all didn't get married? 
because marriage is not a state institution, right? It's most people would argue that it's a spiritual institution and there is no documentation needed in order for a woman to be your to be your wife. Okay, right? so you so y'all had a y'all co had a covenant is what you communicate. Absolutely. Okay. Now, go ahead and give me your thoughts on this one because I'm ready to hear this from you, especially being in it for 14 years. Does a man have to be married to reach and achieve his highest and best self? <laughs> So respectfully, first of all, shout out to my man, Anton Daniels. I would uh, be remiss if I didn't do that. Shout out to him and everything that he has done for the space and content creators such as myself. No. Um, my answer to that would be no. I was trying to get in on the, the, the first question though about the sexuality, but I don't think so. Um, it's, I know we hear a lot about the statistics about marriage and, and men um, being their best financial selves when they're married, right? No, no, no. And I'm not even just speaking financial. I'm just speaking just yeah. general, being your best man that you can achieve and become on all levels. Do you feel like you need marriage to achieve that? No, no. Okay. So I think, because, so, you know, there's a scripture that says, who, who found it, the wife, right? We all know that scripture, right? And and the, the basis of that scripture is that when you find this woman, she is already supposed to be the wife material. Well, it would be unfair for you not to be the husband material prior to meeting her, right? And so I think as a husband, when you're coming into that kind of situation, you should be probably the best version of yourself that you can possibly be, possibly be in that moment, right? Which would mean you would have attained that without the assistance of a wife. But the thing is that we're always evolving over time. You're always becoming a better version of yourself. And I think you can do that whether or not you're attached to another person. Um, Beans, I uh, thank you very much for your perspective on that one, brother. Appreciate it, Beans. I wanted to, I definitely wanted to hear from a brother. We got a lot of ladies backstage, but we got to hear from the brothers on this one. I actually, actually, I kind of do want to hear what a lady thinks if a man can reach his highest and best self. Without, let, let me see. Let me see. I'm going to bring Christine to the stage. Funny. Christine, what's popping with you? Hey, hello. How you guys doing? What's up, Christine? I'm blessed. Christine, let me know. Christine, oh, well, let me slow down. Give me your age, location, and relationship status, Christine. Okay, I am 62 young. I'm in Rochester, New York, and I am very happily single. <laughs> yeah, I think the last time we tried to do a little Harley and Love oh, with Christine. You remember, remember that? Man, I remember that, Christine. It was uh, Christine and Dr. Steele for I a second. I remember yeah. that, Christine and Dr. Steele. Yo, Christine, help me out on this one. Do you believe that a man can reach and become his highest and best self without marriage? Well, I was married uh, six going to seven years before. And from uh, experience and just listening to, like, the late Dr. Miles Monroe, you know, Honor to Antoine and all these other generals. I respect you guys. However, um, to help me, God made women to be a helper, to help him become his greater self. You know, there's, there's things that a woman brings to a man to support him, to push him, to be there for him that he can't do by himself. That is just me, you know, and uh, a helper. That kind of thing. I so mm, it can happen, but I think the greater, you know, that that total satisfaction, you know, affirmation is when he's married. Yeah. Got it. Got yeah. it. Well, listen, we got it. First of all. I'm not surprised that a lady come on here and said that you need me to reach right. your highest and best self. <laughs> I think that's true, though. I but think, to I, be I, honest, I, yeah. I understand and I respect it, Christine. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. I think Christine, she 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 right on that one. You know, I don't I don't you know I've never been married, obviously, but uh, I just remember when I used to have my little team. You know, I had my main joint, mm -hmm. my main lady. When I had my main lady, she was doing all the main lady things, and it seemed like all the side ladies was 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 thinking I was upgrading. Like, oh man, your sheet's really nice. <laughs> oh man, you finally decided to get that wall painted. Oh man, you got tissue and paper towels and food in the fridge. But you know, that's just me. Hey, hey, the old hey, me. hey, Coach the old Trump, me. Coach Trump, he just slutted out your whole. <laughs> he just turned your whole the righteous. Said, the boy said. Your, the boy said yo, a team. When he said when he said a team, me. I that's said the this old boy. 
Like, like, hey, no, 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 we, no, no, we got to bring the <laughs> 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 Listen, when I'm when I'm the moderator, I just get to tell jokes. Hey, hey, no, hey, no. He, said, hey, he said he said he got started five, but he only had one that had a max deal. He was like, all I had one that had a max deal. So. <laughs> you know, you know, honestly, I really think that's a really great conversation, and I want to see if Anton actually can change the tune when we start talking about a woman. Because I'm really curious about this, Anton. Can a woman become her highest and best self without a man in her life? Um, I think so. I think that there are some women. Are you talking about the majority? No, talking, they can't. If you're talking about the majority, no. If you're talking about um, some anomalies, because, I mean, there are some women that can do some of the things that men do, right? From a corporate perspective, like, there's some phenomenal women CEOs. But if you're talking about the majority, I don't think that they can. I think that it's very difficult, even when we're talking about what modern times where things have become so much easier. Listen. If you just want to look at it and break it down from a statistical perspective, right? Women are tired. They tired. Like, like if you look at the, the, the student loans, they say women are the most educated. No, women are the ones that hold the most debt when it comes to trying to get an education, right? Women are the ones that suffered the most during the pandemic. Now that the rent moratorium is up, women are the ones that are, the, that, that are at the top of the totem pole for the ones that's getting evicted the most. That's a statistical fact. Right. And so when we think about that and we really take it into consideration, women are suffering at large in mass. And so when you talk about putting putting you in the best position, I think that it's very difficult for a woman to operate in her purpose and her femininity without somebody covering her. Absolutely not. And, and even for my own daughter, I won't my daughter won't leave my household until she gets married. There's no way that I'm going to let her go out here in these streets by herself. At all. I have to cover her. I got to make sure that she's protected. I got to put her in the best position possible. I want her to spend her time learning and understanding what it means to be a great wife, what it means to be a great mother, what it means to be a great person, what femininity really looks like. She can't do that if she's out here competing with people like me. That's that's not going to sleep. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think that a woman in at large in mass can really become the best version of themselves unless they're afforded the opportunity to really be able to operate within their femininity. This is why they need fathers in a home. This is why, you know, you, your father walks you down the aisle and then hands you over to your husband because it's supposed to be cover to cover. It's supposed to be cover to cover. You're never not supposed to have that covering above your life. And so absolutely not. I think for the majority, no, there's no way that they can. Got it. Now, and listen, that's, that's interesting. He's coming back. He's coming back to my side now. He's coming back. Now, we, we on the set, we're on the same page for that one. I want, I want to hear from Professor, though, man. Professor been laid back, man. I want to hear what he got to say about Odie, that. Let, so let me, I'm, I'm going to ask him, make sure he understands the question. Professor Odie, can a woman become her highest and best self without marriage to a man? Mm. Most definitely. Most definitely. Right? So, in my mind, when it comes down to marriage, two people are supposed to add to each other, right? So if you are coming into this space as an individual who is coming to add to this person's life, in my mind, you're already supposed to be at your best or you're already supposed to be coming towards your best when you are coming to join with this person. So for myself personally, I'm not gonna join with somebody who is not on par with me or does not understand what it is that I need and how it is that I can reciprocate what it is that they need in order to get where it is that they need to go. In my mind, there's no such thing as a woman cannot obtain her highest and best self without being married to a man because marriage is not something that's necessary in order for you to obtain your purpose or marriage is not necessary for something. I'm sorry. Marriage is not necessary for you in order to obtain who it is that you are as an individual or to actualize what it is that you want to actualize in your life. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's necessary. No. Can I ask him a question really quickly? Yeah, of course. Go ahead, Anton. Do you think that, um, and this is for, um, I'm sorry, I forgot what his name is, but he's a therapist. Um, Professor do you Odie. Think, Professor Odie, I'm sorry. Do you think that it's possible or do you think that it's just as impactful as far as what success can look like for a woman um, or even for a child in general for them to be able to be raised in a single parent household versus being raised in a two parent household? Do you think that you know, you can be just as successful or, or you have a better chance or you have just as much of a chance to be successful um, versus being raised in a two-parent married, married household. Okay. 
So when you say a single parent household, you're, I'm assuming that is just one parent. So it's not that they're unmarried. It's just one parent. Correct. Okay. So statistically, that doesn't pan out, right? I'm not going to sit up here and be like, oh, no, no, no. Statistically, that, that, that does not pan out. What it is that I'm saying, though, is that in a two-parent household where both parents are stable, both parents have the ability to provide for that child, and both parents have the ability to understand what's necessary for that child, then yes, statistically, there are better outcomes for children. Hmm. I just wanted to ask a question. So let me yeah. take this conversation, by the way. I, I want to take this conversation in a um, bit of a different direction here because I appreciate you brothers in here. We are at the nine-minute and 36 minute mark of the uh, or 9 36 p.m on eastern eastern time so y'all been going in for quite a minute because we've been rocking since eight and i want to go ahead and take this one in a bit of a different direction because i th i think this is important here i want to address some of the cultural language here that we use here you might hear this a lot we might hear the beta males we might hear the alpha males we might even hear simps i even remember when um uh, my boy uh, Anton, Anton, Anton kicked the door send us, in. Sent the message to us. Yeah. He sent the message. He said it's too much simping going on. The conversation. <laughs> that was when we had when we had Yada on. So I actually want to talk about that because when we're talking about the spectrum of masculinity that we have, let's even start here before I get to my um, my, my next layer question. Beta and alpha is that an accurate assessment to measure? the spectrum of masculinity for most men right now. So, see, right now. see I, I, I get triggered, man. I, I get triggered. The whole spectrum of man. There's no such... We, 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 start, we start to create... We're, we're making up narratives culturally that people are running with. There's no spectrum. Um, you're, either mas you're masculine. You're a man. You should be masculine. You're not. But what happens, what happens to us as a culture? There's no traditional, consistent, cultural rites of passage into mature masculinity. So, so many people from different homes and lifestyles and perspectives are left to, boys are left to interpret this stuff. They're left to the streets. They're left to a single parent. They're left to trauma, abuse, neglect. Like, these things lead to us coming up now because everybody got a phone and everybody got an opinion. So now people now creating these spectrums of masculinity. And that's why now people have to take, create dialogue and we have to give an opinion because now people that made up alpha, beta, data, beta, beta, uh, 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 bruh, it's masculinity. And what happens right. is we don't know what it looks like because we're not consistent in our culture of what that looks like. So now, because I see, I, I saw this, he said he was mad. I saw this, they said, but he's wearing fingernails. Okay, paint the So now all of this is left to interpretation now. So you saying that there is no difference between? Okay, let me let me reframe the question. Reframe the question. So you're saying that there is not a hierarchy among men because all we doing is putting a label to it. That's all we doing. Mm. A hierarchy among men in in what regard? In every regard. Who's better than who? That's why we have sports and we compete, right? There are there is always a hierarchy among men. Even amongst women choosing the men that they want to be with, they're choosing or, or they're, they're aligning their preferences based off of what that hierarchy is. And that's why women are hypergamous and that they want the best available option. Only thing we did was put a label to it. And so people don't like labels because then they have to separate themselves and then they have to compare themselves to the other person in order to justify where their position is in life. But there absolutely is uh, a beta male, a uh, uh, alpha male 100 percent. there is there always has been and always always will be a hierarchy among men mm. i think it's just different uh personalities within masculinity as a man man to man human to human i don't see a hierarchy but if you put it in the context of a sport or a, a test or a job then yeah the best person is the best person particularly if it's all male but as a man and, and just living in life as humans like you're a man in masculine now because your personality type is different from mine i have to give it these variations okay but i don't so believe that you. just 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 a man as a human being that there's a there's a there's a there's a pecking order with amongst us because you know our personality types are different if you if you're dealing with a guy and let's just say for example you go you knock on his door you go to his house i'm just going shoot off the hip right 
and you say, hey, man, uh, is it possible that I can go over here and, 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 you know, take care of this over your grass or can you do this? And and then he says, hold, hold, hold on for a second. Let me go ask my wife. How do you view that man versus a man that just operates within his masculinity and decides to make a decision right then and there? Do, would you label I, I that guy face. differently than a guy that actually is the head of his household versus the guy that always got to ask his wife for permission to do whatever it is that he's supposed to do? And I'm not saying that you're not supposed to discuss and that guys is just supposed to completely disregard the woman that they with. But I'm saying that a guy that always needs permission from his wife, would you label that guy differently than the guy that actually understands what being the head of his household is? I would, I would have some questions if that was always the case about stuff that just has to be done. Right. Exactly. I would have some questions. I would have and some questions. But then, you don't want to label but, him beta. You don't want to label him beta because you don't like the term, but you absolutely have slotted him, regardless of whether or not you want to verbalize it or not. You've slotted him as the beta and you know it. I don't know why we just won't be honest. I, what, what is it with these titles that we, we don't want to just be honest with what it is and call it for what it is? But see, I'd rather be devil's advocate. Because it could be a situation, right, where he was the alpha and he put his hands on her and he's trying a new thing. It could be a situation where he was alpha and he cheated on her. It could be a situation where he was the alpha. He he has he has a gambling problem. That means that you have a lot of big discipline. I would say the guy that's alpha understand the purpose that he's supposed to be leading his family with and would never put a piece of box or a piece of pussy ahead of what it is that he's supposed to be taking care of inside of his family. As a matter of fact, I think that a lot of those guys that make that decision is beta. We'll so that. I don't we'll believe that just because you, you think that you're stronger than a woman or that you can put your hands on her, that that means that you alpha. I think that that's a fake alpha. That's a fake situation or a fake narrative that we put out there. But in reality, I think that the one that actually is leading a family and able to, to, to lead their family without ever putting their hands on a person in the first place is, is the alpha one. That's the guy that's taking care of business. No, but no. somebody's, but, but, but again, but it could be like you made a mistake. It could be you dealing with a, a season, you dealing with a challenge, you dealing with an issue. So I, I am a little bit empathetic in the reality of there's some things that situational that people are just going through in their relationship and their marriage for a season until guys get the help, get the cope, get the skills that they need to you manage things the way the that they would do. You never because answered everybody, the You never answered the question. The question was that guy that you knocked on his door and for every single time he got to go and check with his wife or he need permission to do whatever it is that he going to do, would you consider him beta? <laughs> I would say there's a challenge. I wouldn't say the word beta. I, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I don't have I don't have different variations. I was like, man, he he needs some help. My mom would go to my mom. My mom would go to. He needs some help. That's all my mom would go to. So you know, that's what I was saying. That, that's my Not, truth. See, Whoa. see, here's the, here's the thing. I actually, because you know, in my regular vernacular, I use I, I use you know those words as well, alpha and beta, just to pretty much. Like it's kind of like what clear. you said, very clear, like what the personality traits are, what's typically the essence of of certain men. Whether it just be due to, you know, his conditioning, his mindset, what, whatever it is, we typically all recognize it, especially women. Because trust me, we got some emails from the ladies just being very honest with us about the situation and the type of guys they dating. And the ladies. A lot of beta men. They just got a very, in, they just know this all. But, 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 but Tyshawn, let me, let me interrupt you. This, I'm, I'm coaching men. I got a cohort of men right now, 100. And I see that people. Even grown men, 20, 30, 40, the age don't even matter. Mm-hmm. A lot of people just not have been coached and mentored by real OG men. Like how to walk and talk. Like they, they, no, they no, don't no, know. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a life sentence though, coach. It's not a life sentence. Like they could, you know, go through some recovery, some coaching and become stronger men. But, you, you know, just being frank about the situation, some men don't have it. And that's just where they're at in life. They are, they're at this state, whatever we want to call it, so, beta or what have you. But before so we go to like, hold on, hold on, one, one second, one second. I, yeah, I, I got to get Odie in the conversation. Odie, get, what, what's going I'm on? I'm say, I don't use this language because first of all, the man who created this whole hierarchy, his name is David Mech. My man's was not even a sociologist. He was not a psychologist. He was none of this. This man was a marine biologist and he watched wolves in captivity engage in whatever it is that they were engaging in. And that's how they got this whole thing. On top of that, David Matt turned around and he asked the publishing company who was putting this out to stop putting it out because it was based upon extremely refutable and extremely, extremely debatable science. Now, 
to the point of a man who has no gumption about himself or a man who has no self-direction, absolutely there's a way that you're going to perceive this man a bit differently because once again, our perception of how it is that men operate is based upon how it is that they can assert, engage, and navigate through a situation. If I'm asking you a question and you always got to go ask somebody else, in my mind, that means that you lack self-confidence. That means that you lack assertion within yourself. I'm not going to call you alpha beta because once again, I don't, I don't use language like that. But at the same time, another same token, I'm going to be saying to myself like, yo, why do you believe, why can't you answer your own question for yourself? Why can't you engage on your own? Like, why can't you stand on your own team, brother? Right? Because my thing is ultimately for me as a behavioral scientist and for me as somebody who does the research, I'm not going to utilize something that the person who created it no longer wants to be in use. That's one, but also too, similar to what uh, Coach Crump said, the first thing that my mind goes to is like, yo, this brother hasn't been properly initiated. This brother has not has not been able to be mentored by a man who is going to teach him how to navigate in particular spaces. Brother, I'm Igbo. I'm Igbo, I'm a Nigerian man. So for me, it's like, yo, I'm not gonna have to consist. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stand. To, I'm gonna stand ten toes down on what it is that I'm gonna say. Whether you believe that it's right or wrong is pretty much irrelevant to me. Is it something that I've learned? Is it something that I've researched? Is it something that I've engaged in? And do I have the confidence to engage in the way that I need to engage? That's straight. You know, this, yeah, this, this, this is silly because even women, even if they don't like you, even if they wanna wanna disagree with you, even if they don't like your rhetoric. I think that the one thing that we can agree on is that being a good man is not enough. I think that <clears throat> even coach would agree with that, that being a good man is not enough. There are some things that you have to tap into from a masculinity perspective that women yearn for. They yearn, for, they yearn for leadership. They, they yeah. yearn for a person to then take control of certain situations that then don't even put them in a position to where they would even have to answer for or speak up for or or the thing that they look for, even by default, provision and protection, a lot of times aligns with not just being a good man because you can be a good man, but that doesn't mean that you're assertive. That doesn't mean that you're aggressive when it, when the situation calls for it. That doesn't mean that you're protective when that situation calls for it. And so I think that labels are important and we want to remove them because we don't want to be offensive, but at the same time, what it does is it identifies and it separates the difference between whether you are or you're not, and then what you need to work on in order to get to where you're supposed to be. Similar to what Coach was saying, especially when it comes to a lot of these guys not having mentorship or strong men in their life. Listen, even when you mentor these guys, you don't want a man in his life just because he's a man. You want a man in his life that exhibits a level of masculinity that could teach him and, and, and guide him and give him the game and an understanding of how he's supposed to be operating that allows for him to be able to love, you know, have his family thrive long term. You're not just going to pick a man, a good man. You need a certain type of guy that can guide this guy and give him be an OG to him so that he can then learn the lessons he's supposed to learn so he can lead his family correctly. It's not enough to just be a good man anymore, especially in today's society. You have to literally yeah. be literally be better than good especially when it comes to the things that women are yearning for, not looking for, yearning for within their spirit. They want a man that operates at a level of masculinity that doesn't cost for them to always be tapped into when they have to make a decision. So they want you to know. Let me, let's go ahead. Well, brother Darius, hold on. Well, brother Darius, can, 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 can I ask him a question, though, of a, like context socially? Because these things are important. Uh, we, we, we talk about interventions and narratives and identifications, but Brother Dan, you to know more about your story, this is my first time hearing, like, you know, about you, your brothers. You said your uncles. I think, I think you said your dad. Right. That all of y'all have all been married, never had divorce. Never like, been divorced. You, I think you mentioned, you mentioned, like, over 12 men in your, in your immediate family, That's right? 13. You got to add in uh, my bro my father had a brother, no sisters. And so he's, he's so also you, successful. So, so you have 13 black men in your immediate family that has never been divorced to have raised their children. That's would you say that's an, would, one of my nephews? But, 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 yeah, but would you say that's an anomaly though for for black no. men in general? No, it's an, it's an anomaly when you compare it to the world. But what I tell people is that no, 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 no. So, but that's what I'm saying in, in comparison to the world. In comparison to the world, I'm not saying ideal. I I, I want that, but I'm just saying. 
in comparison to the world, the people that's in the world, the men that's in the world, they don't have 13 men around him that's been married their whole life. That's correct. I agree with that. So that what I'm my support is speaking to the reality in the world that men don't come from that cloth and that they actually not only don't come from that cloth, but they come from multiple influences, multiple unstableness. Right. And multiple opinions about what a man is. And then through that, that they given have to him by what? in most situations it was given to them by who their mother. The, yeah, the, the household and the world that they were they was brought up in because that person left them too to the, to the community. Left them too. You can yeah. say it their mother. They was raised by mm -hmm. a woman. And so what they were taught as masculinity or how they were supposed to operate was based off of the lessons from their mother. Like, I don't know why we won't just call a spade a spade and just be direct. It came from the circumstances by which they then was raised in a single parent household. That's a completely different conversation. But they got their lessons from their mother. Mm -hmm. But the point I'm making is my 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 empathy comes from knowing they don't have that narrative. That's all I was pointing out. I, I want to ask this, too, just just for context of, of really understanding how we feel like men have evolved when we talk about manhood or masculinity over the last few generations, do we feel that me men in general have gotten weaker over the past few generations? Y'all want me to take that too? I can Anthony, do it. Go ahead. Pop it off. No, I'm finna. I can take that too. Like, we want to go there. Do I feel like do I feel like men have gotten weaker? Yes. Absolutely. Right. But I feel like they've gotten weaker in their morals and their constitutions. They don't know how to regulate themselves outside of being applauded, outside of being lauded. They don't know how to direct themselves. They don't have any direction. They have a lack of self-sustainability. They, they don't they, they don't recognize their purpose. And when you bring that to their attention or when you bring that to their to their to their purview, they get upset. Right. It's like, a, oh, well, this is no, brother. No. This is the reason why when I have conversations with men and they start talking about what women are like, no, bro, what are you doing? Where are you going? Where are you coming from? Have you taken accountability for yourself and what it is that you need to do for your life before you start talking about these women? Like, no, shorty. So do I feel like men have gotten weaker? Absolutely. But I feel like they've gotten weaker in such a way of self-regulation, in such a way of mm, mental fortitude, and in such a way of understanding what it means to lead themselves before they're leading anybody else. They're, they got weaker because the generations that came before us failed us. Mm. Come on. And I, preach, preach. And I, I'm about to say, we, we allowed this to happen. Yeah, I'm not going to sit here and say it's self-regulation. Children often at times, and this is scripture, pay for the sins of their parents, pay for the sins of their fathers. And so that's why, right? The generations that came before us, and I'm not even, you know, I'm not talking about me, obviously, but I'm talking in general to the general population. The generations that came before us, they had the greatest opportunities of all time and they failed. They fumbled. Even the narratives that we live by today based off of what they've substantiated, happy wife, happy life. That is not a thing. That is not a thing. Ab absolutely not. They left their families. Uh, they subjected themselves to the worst of society to have more freedom than they ever had before. They, they were supposed to be standing on the shoulders of giants of the civil rights leaders that came before us in order to really be able to take over and lead their families. And they had the football and they fumbled it. They fumbled it at the 50 yard line, not even not, not even at the goal line. Your, mm. your father was a simp. Your mother was for the streets. If we really want to trace our lineage, a lot of these women had children with other men and we didn't have the technology to be able to test their DNA to find out whether your father was really your father. Ooh. Some of y'all are walking around with trauma and you're not even attached to the person that you thought was your father. They told you that you can go out here and slut it out and that you can come back from it and then recover from it, not understanding that you can't unsee the things that you saw from the men that you slept with. They taught us and they gave us feminism. We attached ourselves to two movements that was attached to white women that wasn't even for you when we broke up our families and then they just left the the residual pieces and they told us that we stayed together but they didn't tell you about the trauma that they went through in order to really be able to keep it together and what it was that it was going to affect you when you grew up and you had to figure it out and i would say that actually men are more participatory in their children's lives more than ever based off of what they don't want themselves to grow up like from their own personal experience and so when we really take that into consideration, a lot of times people get mad at the messenger today 
but they're not getting mad at their parents that put them in a position to, to have to thrive and survive for themselves in the first place. You not meant to be, look, as much as you may not like me in a way that I say things, let me help you to understand something. It ain't your fault. It ain't even your fault <laughs> that you don't like me. It's your, it's your mama fault and it's your father fault. Hold them accountable before you get mad at my rhetoric because there's nothing that I said that was wrong. Everything I talk is based off of scripture and it's the truth. But it's your parents, your father, your grandfather, and your great grandmother. She was messing with the milkman. She had children out of wedlock. It's women out here that have never taken accountability for how it is that they put their children in the worst position possible. It's a lot of men that's having a lot of the, the majority of the children and we not calling it for what it is. And so hold your mama accountable for the situation that you found yourself in and then now you transferring generational curses over into the next generation because you still paying for the for the sins of your mother and your father. That's the truth. <laughs> I got a question. Well, Anton went off. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Before we go, before we go there, hold your mama accountable. <laughs> honestly, he held, he held, because we talking. The question was for those of you who didn't, who missed it, came in late. Have the generations of men got weaker? So, I mean, it makes sense if the latter of the generation is weak, then it probably got something to do with the generations prior, which I can absolutely and we, agree and with. We, and we got to, we, again, you got to put this things in this full context. Which generation of, of men got weaker? The black and brown generation, because, you know, my Jewish brothers, they still strong. My no, Indian brothers, they... Too. No, 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 no. White white men men. Are weak. Yeah, the white men are weak, too. A lot, white, a lot, men are, a lot uh, white men, this is a white man's fight. Even yeah. when you talk about a lot of the talking points that we're talking about today, white men has been going through this before. We, When you talk about the red pill space, you're talking about men going their own way. That's a white man thing. They way got before the, black the, people the, even start having this conversation, white men had lost control of their households way before black people ever got to the, got to the, starting, the starting line. That's a white man thing. White men lost control of their own households. That's why you had white women then adopting feminism, which black women then attached themselves to. It's a white man's game. And we just playing. But, the point, the but I'm saying, but we're, we're, we're participating in something that it, at the end of the day, we have allowed as our forefathers, as people that's an adults today, we allow these things to take place. This stuff don't start in your 20s. This thing starts when you're two. And so at the end of the day, you can't blame multiple two-year-olds for maturing to be 20 and operate in a certain way. You got to hold the people. I, I just want to double down on you got to hold it because I, I see my son trying to manipulate in public. And when he was two years old, he was very crafty. And I had to correct him. I had to guide him. I had to discipline him. I had to train him. From a very young age, he was very intuitive. But like, I can't sit there and be like, you know, let him just express himself and let him just talk any kind of way. Let him just act any kind of way. No, you train him. Make them understand. You have conversations. You, you be an example yourself. The reality is a lot of children didn't have that. A lot of them. They had a whole different version. And that's related to where we are now when it comes mm -hmm. to men. So f first of all, this was this is heavy. Go ahead, Ryan. I got these super chats I want to get through real quick. Shout out to Kendra Butterfly. I really think all of y'all are saying the same thing, but just in a different manner. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Of course, shout out to all in this shit. Shout out to Georgia Burns said this conversation needs to be followed by a host of women who understand the role of help me. Good idea. We might mm, have to put that one in place, Miss Bourne. Shout that. out to her. I'm not gonna read that one. Shout out to Carrie Spencer, Glad Unson, and Coach Crumble no, no, no. making it clear the about the role of a man. We operate with the way too many freedoms, and it's totally com okay. Hold on, hold on. First off, I just seen Booty Warrior in there, so I just tried to skip it. Let me see what it is. <laughs> Anton, is it masculine to allow a booty warrior to compliment your body? Anton, what? Uh, well, first you, of all, is this well, an inside joke? What's the situation? situation? Just to be clear, we don't even answer questions, and it just kind of throws us off. But if you really want to go ahead and attack, yeah, us I can answer it. Yeah. So I did an interview with a guy named Fleece Johnson that had got out of jail, and he had went viral back in the early 2000s, uh, based off of a, a MSNBC lockup interview where he was talking about how he uh, take advantage of young guys that get into prison. Um, we, we had a, actually me yeah, and Rita he's, he's, was there. Yeah, me and Rita yeah. was there. Uh, and it was a bunch of other security. But the purpose of the interview was to showcase and to warn young guys and to give them an inside look of how they then become prey as a result of being come, becoming a part of the prison industrial system. So um, I think that the interview did exactly what it was supposed to do. And that's the reason why I released it. And, you know, I wanted to show people that it is cool to be a nerd. You don't have to go to jail. Uh, you're not supposed to understand prison talk and when prisoners try to approach you. 
And he asked me prior to me even having an interview, he said, hey, can I really, really, you know, be be all of that and entertain or whatever? And we said, yeah. And we, we wanted we wanted him to do that so that we can make sure that we help people to understand that you don't want to become become a part of the system and it ain't nothing cool about it. So, yeah, I think it was cool. Public service on that announcement on that one. I, I get it. I get it now. And we all think if you watch the Boondocks, if you watch the MSNBC back then, you know who Fleece Johnson is. Oh, absolutely. He's, yeah. a, legend. He's a legend. A media legend. <laughs> a media legend. Right. <laughs> right. Media legend. I don't know about that one. <laughs> right. Yo, so yeah, shout out to him. And shout out to Reba Parks. Shout out to Carrie Spencer. That's super chat. Shout out to Eugene Steele. Gentlemen, you thought that men are not equipped to sustain long term relationships. If this is the case, how do some men end up in the successful marriages? Well, I mean, there's always outliers, right? I think that's a pretty easy now, question to answer. But, but, but also, I think, you know, you never arrive. You always evolve. Like, you get better as it goes, too. It goes back to what Anton's saying about a person having a baby and saying, okay, I'm a father. It doesn't mean they're the best father in the world and got three certifications in fatherhood. You're just so committed that you're committed to also figuring it out. And that you develop the skill set of being better over time. I Understood. agree. You, you, you take the time to you take the time to learn, grow, and understand yourself to a particular degree, where you recognize, you take up that mantle, and you take up that responsibility, and you continue to regulate yourself in such a way where it's like, yo, I have things to do, and I have a way in which I need to go in order to make sure that these things get done. And you take up that responsibility. You transform. For sure. Shout out to the Dark Hero 82. And one more. I'm going to go ahead and read this one. Creole Butterfly says, the elephant in the room has always been men raised by a single mother. No one wants to admit that women are raising the same type of men they deem uninitiated. Thank you for addressing this fact. I'm happy that word is being used because obviously for those of you who don't know, probably Anton don't even know. That's literally how the entire title of the show came with this hardly initiated generation of men and women that we have and today actually because we nearing the end of this conversation i actually want to talk solutions now with you brother so let's mm. kind of change the context of the conversation because we have addressed that we have a generation of men now that are pretty much at, on, on a decline at this point mm. and most men are not able to sustain these long healthy relationships but the irony of that is we need these healthy relationships to be the foundation of a healthy community and a society. So that is a big issue that we are having. I put a lot of onus on men, especially as a man, that is going to be us to find a solution to this. So if we're talking to a group of men and we telling them, where do we start to get our shit together? How does that look? Where do we start? Taking personal accountability, straight up. That's always going to be my answer. I firmly believe that as men, if we are going to call ourselves men, then we need to be, one, engaged in things that create that ability to have integrity, that ability to have follow through, that ability to sustain what it is that you say that you're going to sustain, and that ability to do what's necessary in order to, once again, take responsibility for what it is that you need to take responsibility for. That's one, but also two, I firmly believe in what it is that Coach Crump is saying, having more initiations into manhood or having more initiations into what it is that it looks like for you to become a man who, what I like to say is worth his soul. So that's, that's, that's my answer. Self, self responsibility. Yeah. And I, and I, and I yeah. And I catch the alley up on the back end. Cause I, I did have a second part, which is, you know, doing the actual rites of passage for every single person. And, and as a man, if you haven't had one, go back and do one. I'm doing mine with my son. Like I said, we're going to Bermuda. He has a three day weekend, all inclusive experience. Only men where he understands what his role and responsibility and all the four mar uh, archetypes of manhood. And then what that looks like for a crumple as he rolls it out over the next 20 years and, and helping him see that, give him paperwork, give him investment accounts, like give him everything he needs at 15 to say this is what it's like to live life as a crumpler so you're prepared to be the man that God and I have and, I, and our family has prepared you to be. Men just don't have that formal transition to be like, got it, I'm gonna run the play. You know what I mean? And um, I think it's my duty to not only do it for my, my son, but I'm bringing some boys with me um, to and share that experience with him and as many fathers and sons to share that experience because that's really what systemically we're missing that we want to make sure at 15 and 16 and 17, every man, and for those who did it, go back, take the personal accountability and say, look, I need to go through a process. I need to read some books. I need to have a paradigm shift 
and how I operate and how I move. You know what I mean? And, and that's 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 what's going to help change it systemically for me is every home with the boys having the rights to pass, but we first got to have those homes. Anton, go ahead. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't think it has anything to do with the guys. I think that guys are doing the work. Um, if you look at Coach Crump, for example, he is already a reflection of it. I don't think that you you come to help people that are already doing the work. I think that you come to help the people and, and hold them accountable that's not doing the work. And so with that being said, uh, I think that the biggest thing is that we need to hold women accountable and we need to stop wow. pandering. We need to stop pandering. We need to stop simping. If you look at the data and the statistics, most black men do not have children out of wedlock. That is a narrative that's being perpetuated and, and, and being, you know, promoted throughout our, our, our spaces and social media. And it's not true. Most men want to be married. Most men are growing. Most men are evolving. Men still make more, more money than women. I don't know where y'all getting this from. And so the first thing that we got to do is we got to stop pandering. We got to stop simping. We got to start telling the truth. And we got to start holding the people accountable that are having the majority of the children out of wedlock and then creating the narrative and the culture by which we then live by. And we don't want to have the conversation because we think that or we keep saying that it's all men's fault and it's not. Women have advocated for equal. They now have the ability to choose for themselves. They then can get whatever job that they want and they can sleep with whoever they want. And they're doing it. They're doing it. And they're ruining the community. They're ruining the culture. And it's it's is creating the worst thing for us. And then we supposed to pick up the pieces, be a stepfather, be a community leader, take on your raggedy son with his snotty nose in order to try to prevent him from stealing my hood caps when he get older. Mm -mm. I think that we need to bring Shaman back. We need to make sure that we hold them accountable. And, and I think that if you are a woman that have children out of wedlock, we need to advocate for them to go back with their child's father. That's what I say. So just so but here's the thing, though, because it's, it's confusing now, because you're saying men are getting worse generationally, but men are being raised worse by women that are having children out of wedlock. See, you can hold every man accountable, right? You can take ninety nine point nine percent of all men and say, clean up your act and they can all get their act together. And guess what? That point one percent of men can still populate the majority of the children because we know that women are having a majority of the children with less than 10% of the men. So the question isn't, we, we answer in a question when we haven't identified the problem. The problem is we're not really, we keep simping and pandering to a population of women that think that they can go and slut it out. They go to these indoctrination camps that we call universities. All women are promoting having a whole face. And then we saying, well, listen, we need to get ourselves together so we can be the best for the community. But we're not dealing with the real issue. The real issue is that we have women that's operating like men, thinking that they're not going to be affected by the men that they sleep with, and then labeling themselves as wives. And we pander to them in order to sell them a product. And we keep telling them what they want to hear, but we're not actually solving for the problem. We treating the symptoms. We not treating the problem. We're not trying to fix them. We're not trying to fix our communities. We're not trying to reset the standard. We keep telling them what they want to hear because it makes them feel good. And what and are some of these, what are of these, some of these guys, messages, Anton? When I see a lot of these guys come on these platforms, I'm just going to keep it 100. And at the end of the day, they selling a product. They not giving you a solution. At least give us the medicine inside of the candy. At least. And, and I'll also be, be very transparent with this. All of these people that y'all keep listening to, they not a reflection of the thing that they advocating for. They ain't even married, but they keep telling you what's, what's best for the black community. How can you tell me what's, black, what's best for the black community and you're not even a reflection of the thing that you're preaching? How are you going to be having children out of wedlock and having multiple baby mamas, but you sitting here talking about what's best for the community? The Lord said you will know them by their fruit and you need to get the beam out of your own eye. The thing that I want somebody to do for me is not be a nuisance and making sure that you're picking up the trash on your own lawn so we can then raise up the property values. I'm speaking metaphorically. What I'm telling you is that we need to hold the people accountable. When you try to solve for a problem, you solve for the majority, not the minority. And more importantly, if we want to talk about these men that call themselves leader in the community, let me see your wife. Let me see how you taking care of your family and your baby mamas. 
Let them come up and speak and say whether or not that you really a reflection of the thing that you advocating for. I don't want to hear no more pandering. I want to see truth. I want to see truth. Communication is 90% what you do. 10% is, is, the, is the reaffirming of what you already are. I don't want to hear from nobody that's not a reflection of what it is. This is the only place you got to go and, and put your resume online, show your degree, give your life experience, your lived experience in order to even be able to get a job. But you can go out here and tell people how they're supposed to live their, live their lives. And you're not a reflection of it. Your life ain't it. That's crazy to me. And so if we really want to solve for the problem, we need to get to the root cause of the, of the issue. And it's this pandering. It's this simping. It's people telling each other what they want to hear instead of telling them the truth. You may not like me, but it's very difficult for you to argue with the results. Very difficult for you to argue with the results. My wife is right there behind me. Everywhere I fly to, she with me. You can't argue with the results. And that's why I have the blueprint of what it takes in order to be successfully married. They telling so, you what you want to hear. I want to so, see people. So let me results. ask you this, Anton. Let me, and I, I'm sorry to cut you off, bro, but I, I'm, I'm curious about this too because you said Crazy. that the root of the problem was that we dropped the ball generationally a while back. Are you saying that generationally it, it, it had nothing to do with the men? You're saying the women was who pretty much took us off track when we when you say our, our, pretty much our ancestors dropped the ball. You're saying it was our lady ancestors that dropped the ball more specifically. Correct. That was the initial issue. But when we see who's having the children today and raising these children, these men that they asking us to come and fix, that's a that's a real time issue. The real time issue versus the initial problem is two different things. The real time issue is that women are still having children out of wedlock with the majority of men. That's not best for the community. And so we can't go back and fix your sent father. His time is up. It's over for him. Now we can get some understanding and hold it, hold each other accountable so that we can better understand how we supposed to move forward. But when we are talking about a real time issue, it's women that are raising men to be feminine and then they telling us that we got to come and fix them. Stop having children out of wedlock. Go back with your baby father. Stop opening up your legs and marry before you carry and hold yourself accountable. Ms. And stop yeah, blaming men for everything. Let, let me ask this. Co Coach Crump, what's your thoughts when you hear that? As far as, um, you know, when we talk about solutions for really, we talk about, I was really trying to find a solution really for masculinity, but it seems like, Anton, you gave more so a it seems like was that the solution you were saying for the black community absolutely that's the, that's the solution for the culture for western culture okay so so what's your what's your thoughts when you hear that coach yeah there are a whole bunch of truth there in there like the biggest principle that i think should be lost is accountability um professors started with personal responsibility culturally the experience has been um we got to make sure that everybody's being held accountable for their behavior. And the reality is we're not consistent with that on, on a lot of levels um, and during, for the culture. You know what I mean? But I'm big on when it comes to masculinity as men, we taking that charge on, taking our sons on and, and taking that issue. Because like you said, the other issue is that am I even the father in the home? Because I know I know a lot of fathers that want to be in their home, that want to be in their life. But the game of child support, the game of baby. Like, it's, it's so many other games that people are playing that even guys that really want to be that can't be that because of the situation they find themselves in. You know what I mean? So, yeah, the responsibility part um, on everybody's part and, and women, like that that helps solve a lot of gaps. But we always pass and blame. Again, that's when all this stuff comes up. When we don't make it a line, when we don't make it black and white, when we don't make it your responsibility, my responsibility, now we create scenarios that people are left to interpret. You know what I mean? Uh, so Odie, yeah. When you, Odie, when you heard uh, Anton's solution, what was the what was the first thing that came to mind? The first thing that came to my mind still, personal accountability. If we're talking about these children being made out of wedlock, if we're talking about all of these different issues, my issue then becomes why is it that we then turn around and make it the woman's problem when it is also us who are contributing to this problem. I can't sit up here and say all of this is just the woman's problem or the women fumbled the ball like, nah, that's me as a man, that's me passing the baton. It's this constant ring around the rosy shit like, nah, bro. If I'm a man and I'm saying I recognize how it is that the community is 
moving in a particular way. And I recognize that men are the ones who are contributing to some of the things that are happening in the community. I'm going to go tell a woman, stop fucking these niggas. But then as soon as they stop fucking these niggas, then we turn around and we got a whole bunch of men who are now becoming predators. We got a whole bunch of men who are engaging in, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 sexual violence. Like, nah, G. If we're what? Gonna- Bro, what do you mean? So wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just, just you tell the women to stop. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Anton, let him finish the thought real quick. Let him finish the thought, Anton. Say that, in, say that energy, Anton. Because the reality of the situation is this. The reality of the situation is this. A woman can't have a baby without a man. Straight up and down. So to continue to have this conversation and put all of the blame on women as if though we are not contributing to this problem, yeah, I don't agree with that at all. Once again, how is the conversation about masculinity now becoming about what women need to do? How is it that we consistently, as men, when we have this conversation, we drive this conversation into what women need to do? We're talking about men. We're talking about masculinity. And the conversation becomes about women. We pass it in the buck. So if we're talking about, and that's the reason why I wanted to ask the question earlier in the conversation, what's your definition of the word simp? Because the way that it is that I learned about the definition of the word simp is a man who has no boundaries, is a man who has lack of control, is a man who consistently engages with a woman who has no intent of engaging with him at the level that he wants to engage. So once again, how is this conversation? And once again, I don't disagree with community wide accountability. I don't disagree with that. But how is it that we get to this part or how is it that we get to this portion of conversation about men where we start talking about women and we talking about men? You said that everybody needs to take personal responsibility and accountability. And then you start talking about men again. Is it everybody or is it just men? That's rhetorical. Don't even worry about that. No, I'm going to answer your question. It's me and men. But hold on. No, but hold on. Because if we're talking about if we're talking about community based engagement, if we're talking about solutions in my mind, in the community that I come from, in the culture that I come from, the men deal with the men and the women deal with the women. So if we're going to have a conversation about what women need to do, I firmly believe that as an Ebo, we lead that conversation to the women. No, we We don't. Because the women are not dealing with the women. They're telling them and they're enabling them. They're enabling them with bad information. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Because the men by default... Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got a question, we got a question. Men by default, men by default are held accountable by society. If we don't pay child support... Hold on, hold on, hold on. If we don't pay child support, we go to jail. By whom? By whose degree? If, if we don't, if hold on, hold on, hold on. Right, who's the if, if, hold on, hold on, Odie, hold on, Odie, hold on. If we don't pay child support, we go to jail. There are no uh, shelters, largely that's made for men. There are shelters that are made for women. Mm-hmm. By default, by life, mm-hmm. if we don't do what we supposed to do, there is no sympathy for us. We fail, we suffer. We don't get the girl. We don't get two hundred dollars and pass mm-hmm. go. We don't get monopoly. We don't get. We don't get the railroads. We don't get nothing. You fail, mm-hmm. you die. And you go. That's it. Women by default are always women. There are no men that are being pandered to. Women by default are always. That's cap. People get on this platform all the time. Can I finish, can I finish my statement? What are you talking quick? about? Can you wait, what, wait, wait, hold on. What platform? Oh, wait, wait, no, <laughs> Bro, when I say this platform, I mean social media. People get on social media and pander to men all the time. All the they time. Don't. They don't. Yeah. Men just started. Men just yeah. started getting spaces to where they can even get their thoughts off. And when they get their thoughts off, women don't like it, and they automatically want to cancel them. As a matter of fact, I'll go so far as to ask you: What women do you know at a mass scale on a with large platforms that aren't single baby mamas that's actually holding women accountable? Multiple. Who? Name one. Multiple. Name one. Jasmine's Garden. Straight up, Ooh. not a baby. Jasmine's garden. You wouldn't know because it's not in your purview, brother. But I know how do you know what's in my purview, brother? Do you know who Jasmine's garden is? I don't. My point. My That's point one is person this. that you name. Mean, how do you, you know just what's say in my name purview? somebody and I name somebody? Okay, and, okay. So you name somebody. So what I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do is I'm a researcher. And That's I'm a better cool. understander, and I'm gonna be open That's to cool. the possibility that I'm wrong. That's but cool. the rea- but the reality is this: women are being pandered to, and I believe that you're being disingenuous by not acknowledging that women I'm are not, being pandered to across the board. To, what Listen. I'm saying is that men are also pandering to other men. You were talking about all these. Yes, they are. What are you talking? Do you They're know not. what the word pander means? Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Right, guys, guys. We now we talking in circles. So I want I do want to advance the conversation um, because. I, now nah, I can't even remember your damn original point, Odie, because I th- I think what you were, what, what were you originally trying to communicate? You were communicating that essentially we shift the blame from us taking accountability as men to putting it over to women, and we pretty much 
uh, additionally add to the single baby mothers we are also a part of the puzzle of the single baby mothers being created was i think was your original point correct my point in my case in point why do we always talk about chastity but we don't talk to men about abstinence we absolutely do hold men accountable. No, we, talk. No, we do not. Bro, no. the biggest thing that, that we say on no, our bro, platform. The biggest thing we talk about as it relates to men being men is men going out here as fucking as many women as they, as many women as you're, they can. You're a liar because as no, a matter I'm of fact, we personally. talk about dick discipline all the time. What anybody in this chat will tell you. That's that anybody in this chat. That's one population. That's, sex, that's selection bias, my brother. If we're talking about how it is that men identify themselves as men, if we're talking about statistically, it is the domination and the sexual, the sexual prowess over women. So how is that not constituting to a problem? Anybody in this chat will tell you that well, when see, I have confidence, that's anybody in the chat. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, one second, one second. You're operating in your femininity no, right no, now. No, 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 not not hold on, wait, Odie. Oh, that's cap. Check it out. What does that mean? Hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Because I, I let you, I, I, I listened to what you said until you stopped. Go ahead, brother. Now, and now I want to, and now I want to rebut, right? Go ahead. I'm, I, I'm and, a, I'm a, Anton, please rebut, and I, I, I have a follow up question here. But go ahead. Anybody in this chat will tell you that when a guy comes up on my platform, or any dude that has ever gotten coaching from me, I go ten times harder on that guy than I ever have any woman. 10 times harder on these guys. And what I find is that the guys are, are way more receptive to changing and evolving than women are. Women tend to be hurt, emotional. They, they want you to speak to their emotions. They want you to talk to them a certain way. But men, we go hard. Like we push them. We make sure that they get themselves together. We don't let them have any excuses. We hold them accountable because we know that society is not going to have no mercy on them. Ain't it's a different set of rules for guys and you got to be way better, 10 times better than the people that you're competing against in order to be successful. So when we talk to men, it goes without saying that we do the work. But every time that we start to, in your words, hold other people accountable because accountability go both ways. Just because I'm holding him, him accountable does not mean that you're right. And so we hold women accountable, but then you get you get emotional about the fact, and I'm not talking about you specifically, but men in general, they get emotional when they send them for these women because they think that we're supposed to treat them with kid gloves when the decisions that they make in is so, so egregious and it's, a, it's hurting us and it's affecting us in a negative way. So men are held accountable. They do do the work and they are girding up and they are becoming better versions of themselves, but I don't see the same thing happening with women. I okay, don't so, see so hold So hold off real quick right here. Odie, last statement, please, Anton. Let him get it off. This is my last. This, this is the last statement here. But go ahead. Oh no, I was done. Perfect. I was done. My, 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 my last statement was once again: if accountability is a two-way street, and if we're having this conversation, if we're going to talk about chastity, we got to talk about abstinence. In the same way you say, Anton, that on your side of the interwebs, this conversation is going on. On my side of the interwebs, the conversation looks a lot different. The conversation no, looks a lot and, different. And let, let me let me add to that, Odie, because you know I've had a lot of men on here, you know, come on the platform, and it's and it's interesting because I, I actually think it's a bit of truth to what Odie's saying. Because when I'm thinking about it, you made a good point. Even when you was talking about like when you were standing on what you were standing on earlier, especially the biblical principle. You were saying, look, that's just not going to go in my house. That's demonic. That's something that's just not even of the rule or law when I come to what's black and white, right? And you really can't get mad at black and white. But in some ways, I will admit, even as a man, I'm, first of all, I'm very honest about the situation. I have not stopped my run in, in fornication at all. I'm sexually active. And I can't say that that's right because every time I have sex, I'm at risk of creating one of these households. So I'm a part of it, right? So the reality of the situation is, if we're talking on biblical principle, a lot of times, I will say this too, as men, I do, the, I do it all the time. We can cherry pick what's righteous and what works based on our benefit. Because if I'm looking at it from an even-handed perspective, technically, if we're talking biblically like you were speaking prior in a conversation, we really should not be even putting women at risk in fornication. Because if we did have sex responsibly on our end, that also does lessen the likelihood that these broken homes are created, but we in sex hookup culture knee deep in the game on both sides, and this is just really is what it is. So, I mean, 
when it comes down to it, Anton, do we as men have no accountability to yeah, we the do have accountability. But see, for example, the first time that you and I ever even spoke on the phone, I was digging into you. Pause. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, listen, listen. We, we, no, 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 no. We, yeah, that, we delay, grown, that delay was serious. I said, bro, go ahead, go ahead. We, grow, we grown men, and so I don't have to say pause because no, I'm you very, good. You, good. you know what I'm saying? We grown men, but the fact of the matter is I was digging in, and I was making sure that I pushed you and held you accountable, and I was giving you the game and making sure that you understood what it took in order to be successful in several different areas and using myself as an example and my own wife. And I and that was the conversation that we had. the first time that me and you talked, that was the conversation. That's a fact. Yeah. It had nothing to do with women. It had nothing to do with holding women accountable or anything like that. And so we are working and we are holding each other accountable. And that's my job as your brother. If we have a relationship offline or online, that's my job to push you and it's your job to push me. We do that. That's already happening across the board. I don't let you get away with saying, yeah, man, I'm just out here fornicating. You know that ain't going to fly with me. That don't fly. And no, so no, no, when we did, when we did, this is the, this the thing, though. I'm, this is the thing, Anton. Everybody don't have a brother like you and me. It's a, just like it's a lot of toxic ass women that got women giving them toxic feedback. It's the same thing that happens amongst men as well. Like everybody don't got a brother that's going to that. put them on game on money. Everybody don't got a brother that's going to put them up on game on morality and ethics a lot of us have brothers out here and bro you in detroit you know what's going down like we we got like player culture is promoted so like we are not all necessarily having those same communities hold us accountable on both ends of the spectrum so a lot of us are lacking the brotherhood that you're speaking on which is but you know better and you're us. still doing it so what difference do it make i'm a, i'm gonna be honest with you i'm a dog i'm an anomaly exactly honestly, so now his, every guy's an anomaly Every guy's in the oh, moment, oh, oh, right? you know what? Let, let me back up. You said I know better and I'm still doing it. Correct. One hundred percent. Now the thing about it is I at least acknowledge I know what I'm do what I'm doing is wrong. And I promise you, Anton, I have no intentions on staying here. But Ty and we all are and different men are in different part places. About the conversation though. Check this out though. I'm married and I'm doing it and I'm advocating for doing it the right way. You not, and you volunteered the information and said, "No, nah, I'm a dog, and I'm moving out here." You know what? what you know what's gonna happen in the chat? You know what's happening right now? They love you. They love you for it because you speak to their emotions and you give them an opportunity to really feel. And it's not about whether it's not. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. It's not about right or wrong. It's about whether or not you make them feel good. But and so I I'm can not, advocate I'm not talking about, Anton, listen, 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 listen. Let's let's oh remove the God. chat. Crazy. Because here's the thing. I don't care about the chat. I'm talking about the solution. I'm because talking about I'm, the I'm, 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 I'm completely isolating that the hundred percent the problem is a hundred percent on the backs. Because here's first of all, I don't even like thinking that the problem or the solution is a hundred percent on the backs of women, because first of all, that means that we are in absolutely no control of success, mm. which I don't even like the thought of that. So the reality of it is, I don't care about what the chat is saying. I'm, I'm, I have what I'm actually addressing here is what is the proper solution for us to get back on track? Because is it just do I just go home and play video games until women get it together, or and is it doomsday if women don't women don't do it, or is there any way that brotherhood that you was talking about can it be expanded? Can it be can it can it be taken to the next level? And then also see incremental levels of change. Is that possible? It has nothing to do with brotherhood because you already know what's right and wrong. You know what the difference is. Men and women are two different creatures. We are. And I hate, I hate that people don't acknowledge the fact that there is always going to be a double standard. And the way that women need to be held accountable is completely different from how men are need, need to be held accountable. You already know the difference between right or wrong, but you're still going to choose to do the wrong thing. Now, when it comes to women, it is a completely different conversation because they only want to feel good. And so they're going to glean to the thing that makes them feel good and the talking points that make them feel good. Most people don't seek out truth. They do not seek out solutions until it's too late. When we come up, when we talk about solutions within a community or the culture, 
Men already know better. They know what they're supposed to do. They are held accountable according to what decisions that they make. And that's just the way that it goes. When it comes to women, we don't hold them accountable. And that's also a part of the solution. Wait, so Anton, talk about what, what are the messages? What are some of these messages that you, you know, are saying that are uh, being pandered to women? Oh, my God. I would have to call out names for that. <laughs> really? I don't I don't want I don't want to you know I don't want to call out names because they're not here to defend themselves. Okay, but, but I would but, have to call out names for that. I mean the perfect example would be a Derrick Jackson. He sold y'all the very thing he sold y'all the worst thing for the community and y'all followed him right off of a cliff and he you you knew he was pimping you. All he did was pimp y'all. And when men told y'all, hey, he pimping y'all. Y'all absolutely ignored us. Y'all said that we was toxic and we was operating in our toxic masculinity until you caught him up doing something that he wasn't supposed to do and you still followed him. Because what you say and making it sweet to your ear is much more conducive for you, what you feel, it makes you feel good versus the truth. It just is what it is. Most people don't like the truth, but I'm not here to pander to people. I'm here to tell them the truth. My people follow me and they rock with me because they want accountability. They don't want to be pandered to. They want to be told the truth. No. And so when you're ready to get the truth, that's the only way in which you can hold somebody accountable because people are going to do what they want to do anyway. Anton, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I actually sat down here. And, and see, that, that's the thing about Anton. I actually, like, I was, a lot of the guys that I was brought up around are very similar to Anton. Like, the way you speak, the way you move, you're married, straightforward, even a bit of your background. So I actually can agree and rock with a hun- like with a lot of what you're saying, I still, I, I, I don't necessarily agree. I'm not going to lie. I do have a bit of issue with your, the, with the community, with pretty much our entire community being at the sole whim of women to go about getting to the next level. Um, I, but, I do but, have, I, but, but Tyson, I, to, to interject, I've been waiting for a while because you want to be careful about what, just accept what he said and don't add to it. Don't, don't, because he didn't say that our entire you know what I mean? We, we, I think we all saying something to answer the solution. But that's why you asked this question. Professor said personal accountability. Mm-hmm. I said on the men, Antoine, um, Mr. Brother Daniels highlighted Anton. the women. Anton yeah. highlighted the women. So we're just covering all our bases. And I just gave a practical thing that men can do. Which is, hey man, put every put every single boy and every single man if they miss the, you know what I mean, a rites of passage. Yeah. And what he's saying is, women be responsible for how you deal with your relations with men and how you deal with your communications with young men. And I'm, the reality is, we need both parts. That's you know what I mean. And then and then for that to work, both parts got to be held accountable for their behavior. Right. So I, I, it's just that we're kind of highlighting the part that he's focused on women. But he didn't say the only way to solve this is that all the women got to do all, all the responsibility for all of us to save our culture. He, didn't, no, 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 he no, just no, highlighted no, 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 that coach, that's a piece that has to be addressed. Coach, no, no, no. That is what he said. Now, I agree with you, coach, because I'm actually a little bit where you are. I'm actually uh, I'm on the side of it is a little bit of both. But Anton, I mean, he, he said what he meant. He said that the men are doing do, the no, work. We doing the work. The women need to get it right. That was actually what he said. So I'm not adding nothing to it. I'm actually communicating with Anton. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did I, did I pretty much say what you said? Because I don't want to misquote you. Yeah, you said what I said. Yeah, but I mean, but, that, but that's, that's there's what no means. reason. There's no reason for me to cover a base that Coach already covered. And that's why I said to add to what he's saying, we also have to hold women accountable, and this is why. Okay. Well, here's the thing. To be honest with you, I understand and I'm absolutely on board with you that the women are not perfect at all. And everything that you said regarding all the debauchery going on over there is absolutely valid. So don't don't get it twisted that I'm discrediting any any of that. And we have had plenty of episodes where we address that. And I think it's just very important, one, that we have men come on the platform and speak to the issues as men of men that we spoke about today. And I appreciate everybody. First of all, I really do thank all of y'all brothers. I strategically picked each one of you brothers 
that I felt like will bring a different perspective to this conversation so we can really touch as much surface area as we can on this issue because I think this is a very important issue to talk about in our community today because just like I said, the brothers that don't have that community, that, that brotherhood, they can't sit at the tables with men like us. They were able to sit with us here today. So I appreciate all y'all brothers for coming up on here and chopping it up with us here today on the platform. Yeah, we, we I mean, it got kind of kind of heated for a second. So we missed a lot of these super chats. I mean, uh, we shout out to Byron Holman. Shout out to uh, Creole Butterfly for sending over a couple, super, a couple super chats. Shout out to J Dubs for getting it popping. Let me see. Uncut Underground sent over a couple of super chats. And and Anton, I think, yo, Anton, you just got like some online beefs going on. Why are these people sending up all these messages? <laughs> shout out to Creole. Shout out to Creole Butterfly. I have worked in education for over 17 years in our own communities. These men are addressing facts. I've seen too many women refusing to allow the fathers to parent. We refuse to co-parent in a healthy manner. Shout out to Jean Bonnet, member for six months. So I got to take care of this one. Anton lacks emotional intelligence. He's seated in ego that's so disheartening. Void of his humanity. Man is clearly at war with self. Anton, are you at war with yourself? Um, Come on, man. I know what my life is like. You know what my life is like. I already know. Shout out to Blue Lotus Village. Women who hold a, women who hold women accountable are Queen of Fool, nearly 50 years, Shahrazad Ali, April Mason, Ashley Empowers, Love Dorsey, and Dr. Michelle Daff, to name a few. We are being held accountable. We have to let that narrative rest. Why you don't read the stuff or the, the smoke? Why you don't read read what it is that they say? It, it, it's not <laughs> that. I'm just trying to, you know, have this certain conversation going. Yeah, actually, it is that. It is that. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid the smoke. Right, it right, is the smoke. No problem whatsoever. Well, look, well, look let, let's let's. He said, "Bring on the smoke." Yeah, man. let's check out this one. Then. Bring on oh, the man. smoke. Uncut underground. All this community talk only to promote Charleston White, Felice Johnson, Kwame Kilpatrick, Brittany Renner, etc., etc. Meanwhile, saying black culture is trash while benefiting from it. Still, straight hypocrite. Do I do I benefit from it, or do they actually watch the interviews? Because if they actually watch the interviews. Uh, they would learn something from it because my goal when interviewing people is not to debate them, but to understand them so that we can make better decisions. See, th this is all emotion talk, right? This is all emotions that come along with that. I'm not there to debate people that I bring up on my platform. I'm there for them to have a conversation and, and, and get a different point of view because I don't want to live in an echo chamber. And I think that you can learn something from anybody, uh, not just people that you want to agree with. So it's not promoting them. It's absolutely using it for content in order to have a deeper conversation. I, I want to talk to people that don't look like me. I want to talk to people that, that think like me. I want the, the reason why I agreed to do this is because it was a debate and it was from people that have a different perspective than me. I don't want to live in an echo chamber. I'm a free thinker. And so I think that y'all are suckers that only rock, up with, rock out with people. I'm talking to the super chatter that only rock out with people that and you only want to hear from people that you agree with can't learn nothing from nobody that you only agree with i want all of the information and then i'm gonna put it together and put the right put the right things in motion and then i'm gonna use the rest of it as an example i'm very curious about this too if this is actually a, a young lady or, or a gentleman i'm married shout out to under, uncut underground with another one i'm married and i bring ig thoughts into my house with my wife and daughter anton is the biggest hypocrite with his fake ass standards That's definitely anton, like a, the I mean, people the people that are that are, that are typically upset with some of the things you say, are these these men, women? Oh, these is all. Oh, it's men and women. Men and women. It's men, it's men and women. Because that's and I, like a I open okay. up my platforms every single day for people to come up there and have a conversation with me. They don't want to do that because they're gonna get embarrassed, and I'm okay with that. And what is it? Is it just your? Is it is it so, something you know, like you saying, hey, women need to be held accountable, or or is it the way you deliver? I'm just very curious. Why? I'm I'm unapologetic. And what I do and what I say, because I don't answer to nobody but God. And so um, I take my direction from God. I study. I read my Bible. I've read it back to forth, uh, back and forth seven times. Um, every single book of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. Every single book of the Bible, I study it. And when I pray in the morning, I don't ask God for things. I ask him for direction. And so I understand what my role is. And my role is not to pander to people in order to make them feel good. Um, my role is and my purpose on this earth is to tell the truth and then let the chips fall where they may. I'm not here for the majority. I'm here for that one soul 
that one person that hear this and say, you know what? I want to do things differently or I want different results in my life. Because at the end of the day, when it's Internet cut off, um, I'm going to go into my multi-million dollar uh, life and I'm going to live it phenomenally. Phenomenally, I'm not going to see all comments. And you got you got to cut the screen off and you got to go home by yourself in your raggedy ass house. And you got to deal with your raggedy ass spouse and you got to deal with with, you know, your baby daddy and you're going to be by yourself. But if you want a solution and you actually want to get to the results instead of feeling good by your, about yourself and getting to the entertainment, you want to get rid of the, the medicine and start, you know, you want to get rid of the candy and start getting to the medicine. It's a way to do that. Come find me. But at the end of the day, I just see a bunch of feminine men um, and, and angry women that's bothered by the truth. The only people that get affected by the truth is when it's actually hitting you. I don't get offended when people say certain things about me because the truth is the truth. And so if you actually say something that's true, then I'll be bothered by it and, I, and I'll change that. But, but until then, all I see is people um, that don't have the results. We all we still in last as a community. Black people are broke. They still being race hustled. You still are the ones that's having the most children out of wedlock. See, Anton, see, look. That, see, no, that's, no, no, why, on, look, that's, that's why, that's why I didn't want to read them super chats. They didn't got you going crazy right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean. They got if, you if going off right now. How you going to be, how you going to be in last place complaining? You got no results. Your children is messed up. Your mama don't like you. The women is out here having children with men that ain't rocking with them. They, they the ones that's filling up the most clinics. If you look at all of the statistics in Houston and Atlanta, it's like a third world country. You can get two for one chlamydia and herpes at the same time. And you want to sit here having a conversation about how it is that I'm talking to you because you don't like it. OK, well, you ain't got to like me. Then go find somebody else that can that can resonate differently. That can still get you the result. But you ain't getting nothing, nothing out of this, nothing out of, out of these people that's pandering to you. Well, Anton, man, listen. First off, <laughs> Anton I, crashed out. I no, nah, I, I appreciate you for coming True. up, here, man. Um, you, Professor Odie, Coach Crump, I appreciate all y'all brothers for coming up on here and chopping it up tonight um, on a debate. If the is there any announcements that we have before we leave the people? No, that's it, guys. Just make sure you get these hardly in love dating cards. That's the biggest thing going right now. I mean, the orders is like weekly. The weekly orders are getting up, and the amount of reviews and testimonies we're getting is insane. So, like, Absolutely. it's really good. And this is the thing, guys. We actually updated the box packaging as well, so you'll get something new if you actually get one of those new packs. Let's get it popping. So, look, much love to everybody that stayed in here. I ask everybody while you in this joint, please go ahead and subscribe to the platform that continues to allow us to keep these conversations flowing at the highest level that we can possibly bring it. As you can see, we not leaning away from the smoke, we leaning all the way into it because we are gonna have the most important conversations of this generation by any means necessary. But you already know how we do it, hardly initiated. We are out. Mm -hmm.